And uh, Ty, we'll have obviously kind of more of a easier way to hear the national anthem, so we shouldn't have to skip over that tonight. So. Mic check, mic check, mic check, one, two, check, one, two, testing, one, two. This is the pre-K kindergarten cheer clinic, pre-K kindergarten cheer clinic. Mic check two, mic check three.
a uh, quick look at their offense, folks. The guy you're going to hear a lot of tonight is going to be Taylor Hunt. Um, he's going to be their quarterback, their quarterback receiver a little bit. He's just an athlete, Dakota. Kind of reminds me a lot of Caden Powell from Clinton over the last four years. He's six foot five, one ninety, and he can run like he's five foot ten. I mean, when you see an athlete like that, what do you think you have to do trying to contain it? Uh, obviously, you're probably going to have to uh, not, let, not leave open gaps, uh, you know, for him to run through. Um, you're going to have to kind of outsmart him in a way. You take a look uh, last week, and it's kind of like a similar situation with Isaiah Hammonds. You know, it's an uncontainable guy uh, most of the time, but uh, maybe uh, with this week of practice and everything that the boomers have gone through, maybe they uh, have focused a little bit on him, you know, and how to close those gaps and how to stop his run, run game. And, He's got a great arm on top of that. You mentioned his run. He's got a great arm, so you got to make sure you don't get the over the top of that. He's got weapons in Jack and Jake Gillen. Those are brothers and running back receiver, very good. And then uh, Woods Harrell, tight end, big, big tight end slash slot receiver. That's talk, another talk, guy. Got to really watch out for defensively. Um, it's on the same guys we just named there. It's Taylor Heim roaming that safety spot um, up front. They've they've got uh, Baylor Tibbetts, who's a, a good senior defensive end, kind of retapping for the Boomers last year in this matchup. And then those guys we just mentioned, the Gilbert brothers in the middle and linebacker Woods Harrell, kind of playing an edge spot, if you will, to move him around the ball in the field. Those two guys will be receivers and corners. So receivers on the offensive end, man of the corners on their spot. They'll kind of be put on an island defensively and definitely, uh, definitely try to be aggressive with that front center together for us last week against the Boomers. We've got just about to over seven minutes before we get things underway here, so let's step aside for another break and on the other side. We'll come back and talk a little bit about what the Boomers are looking to do in this one. This is Boomer Football on C92. Um, Tyler, one thing we do need to just, like, mention that they're going to be gone, like Manuel is going to be injured. Do we have anything yeah, else? Yeah, that's, we'll get to okay. that with this, yep. Okay. I yep. don't know who all we had missing today. I think that's it.
And we're back here at Boomer Same Had the national anthem there. If you caught the tail end of that, try to get that for you. Uh, but uh, Dakota, we were talking a little bit there before the break about looking into what Woodward's got to do in this one. Um, I think the big takeaway for both of us that we, we know is with talking with the team and coach is just growth, that they really want to grow from week one to week two, similar to they did last season. You know, one thing I saw last week is Woodward just couldn't really get anything going. You know, they – they covered Talon perfectly. You know, every track of the way, Talon could not get his hands open. In this game, if, if Talon can break away for a catch, I mean, we're going to see something that we didn't see, obviously, last week. We're going to see a lot more out of this team. Uh, this team looks a little bit more ready to go than they did last week, for sure. After after that one week of just maybe it's the first week of jitters, you know. Yeah. Uh, just once you get that rhythm going for Woodward, uh, I think that you're going to have a, a, a better game than you did last week, for sure. So just got to have – something to put on the board to start out and we'll take it from there yeah and uh eric i want to bring you in on this if i can because you know eric uh, not only a teacher but he's done some coaching in his time and has experienced this what's it like when you know you, you come off kind of a tough defeat and you're trying to tell a team hey it's you know beginning of the season you got a lot of room to grow how hard is that to get them to buy in or you think it's kind of easier to refocus you know guys like that And, Eric, to no surprise, um, what you just said right there is essentially what Coach Luchin has been talking about. What we talked about on the coaches' show um, in that segment was just not necessarily focusing on what Bethany can do, but, like you said, what this team can improve and get better at going from week to week there. So, um, with that, we got just under a couple minutes here before kickoff. They're about to come out of the, the tunnels, I should say, so we'll have coin toss and all that. So let's step aside for a final break. And after that, we will have the kickoff, the coin toss, starters, all that get you underway. It's Boomer Football on Z92. And welcome back here to Boomer Stadium. Dakota Wagner, Tyler Riggs, and Eric Scott with you. And uh, coin toss getting ready to take place now. It looks like your captains for tonight for the Boomers here. If we could pull this up just a bit. We got Taylor Laird, Sam Cheap, Ethan Matt, Hunter Harrison, and as well, Luis Corral, the senior. So senior group there on the uh, captains for the coin toss. And we'll see how this coin toss lays out real quick before we get to the starting lineups for both teams. As they're getting set there, Bethany looks like pretty much their seniors. I see uh, Jack Gillen, Kel Wiska, Woods Harrell, and I believe, yep, Colton Calderon. So that's their captains. There's the toss. Looks like the Boomers have won the toss. They've chosen to defer, and so that means Bethany most likely going to start here on offense, and they will. So Boomers going to kick off to start the game. Bethany going to be on offense. Dakota, we get to see that Boomer defense in action to start things before get to that let's get to the starters starting with the visiting bethany broncos at quarterback they'll go taylor heim and kel Wiska, two seniors there at the receivers they'll go colton calderon rylan sanders and woods harrell at the running backs jaden and jack gillen the brothers the seniors all seniors there i just mentioned on the offensive lines where they get a little younger left tackle junior will strawn Left guard, Parker Daniels there, number 72, the senior. And center, Max Pace, a sophomore, the youngest starter on this Bethany team. At right guard will be Abel Saldito. And at right tackle, Christian Siegler, both of those guys, juniors. On the Bethany defense, on the back end, at left corner will be Colton Calderon, the senior. At safety will be Taylor Heim. 
At the other safety spot, you have Wyatt Geisler, sophomore, and then Kel Wiska. They will rotate the sophomore and senior there. The right cornerback, you have Ryland Sanders as well, senior yet again. Um, and then along the linebackers, familiar names, Jack and Jaden, man in the middle there, the Gillen brothers. And at the outside linebacker spot, Woods Harrell. The other outside linebacker, Jordan Strotter, a senior as well. Along the defensive line, Baylor Tibbetts, senior defensive end. Nose guard will be Will Strom, the junior. And right in will be Charlie uh, Tolly, the sophomore younger brother of Peyton Tolly, who was a phenomenal, phenomenal athlete for this Bethany squad. You can hear uh, Troy Hartley there in the background talking about the Boomers coming out of their tunnel. Good, good looking group right now coming out. Crowd is up. And uh, speaking of those Boomers, let's get to the starters for Woodward here. It's pretty much the same from last week. One minor change. We'll get to that. It's on the defense end, but it'll be Sam Cheap at quarterback. We'll be see Ace Long at tailback, along with some Hayden Hillier, Ethan Matt at fullback. Um, on the receiver spots, Taylor Laird, Lucas Shirky, Luis Corral, or uh, Lucas Shirky, Taylor Laird, uh, what am I trying to say? Carson Medina, Cash Shipley, and maybe some Luis Crowell there at tight end along the offensive line. Hunter Harrison, Drake Cavillas, uh, Layton Phillips, uh, Peyton Carter, and LJ Mason along the uh, left to right side there in terms of the line. On the defense, the defensive line, Luis Crowell on the end, Ethan Matt on the nose, Hunter Harrison on the other end. At the linebacker spots, this is where we get to our changeup. Manny uh, Benuelos, he is out. He is unfortunately yep, cast up. So that will bring in Josiah Beza, the uh, young sophomore, replacing him there at the uh, outside linebacker spot. Then will be Kaysen Bourne at the middle, Zathan Klingenpil there at the strong linebacker in the corners. You'll see Taylor Laird and Mason Boring, who had a big pick last week against Guthrie. And then at the safety spots, Carson Medina, Hayden Hill, you're playing kind of that nickel, and Lucas Shirky there at the free safety. So with that, I do want to mention, hey, thank you all for joining us on Z92. Go check out Boomer TV tonight. You could search your YouTube, Boomer TV, find that live stream. We're hooked up with them. So glad to have them. If you can't find it on YouTube, go to Z92Online.com, and we've got the link to their YouTube right there as well. So... Boy, ready to get this one going as uh, teams getting lined up. Coach is getting some last words there. And Bethany ready to receive. It's going to be Wyatt Geisler back there as well. It should be uh, Colton Calderon on that back at the other split. They'll have uh, Geisler here to the near side, if you will, of the field, and then Calderon out there to the far. Of course, kicking off for the Boomers, it's going to be the freshman with the leg, Mr. Ace Long. Oh, boy. Ready to get this one set. 12 minutes on the clock. Week two of Boomer football action here on Z92 and Boomer TV. And a beautiful, beautiful night here in Northwest Oklahoma to do it. There's the whistle. Ace Long going to jog off his steps and puts the boot into it. This one's a bit more of a liner. It's got uh, Geisler backed up all the way to the goal line. Geisler's going to take it out from there to the 10, the 15, the 20. He's got a bit of a hole. There's a flag down. And Geisler is well up there at the 30. Looked like, I believe, a couple of youngins in on that tackle right there. And the flag most likely going to be holding. This one might be coming back. And that's what it is. So good deal there to cut a straight away for the Boomers. Not only do you make a nice open field tackle on Wyatt Geisler, you also get the penalty to push Bethany back. Yeah, great. You know, just great there by, the, especially for the flag, you know. Yeah, got lucky on that one. But get to put them back in the end zone, and hopefully we can start get some early defense going. Well, and they were turnover. able to do that last week. You know, we had Mitch Mason Bourne had a big pick in the end zone to start things, if you will. And um, I think we're hoping to see the Boomers get off to a fast start as well here defensively. And Glad so it'll be Bethany backed up to the 15 to start this one. Oh, not quite. The 16 is what they've got. Excuse me. So it'll be first and 10 for the Broncos. It's going to be Taylor Heim out there at the quarterback, and he's going to have both Jack and Jaden Gillen in the backfield with him in kind of an odd set. Now a man goes in motion across formation. That's Woods Harrell. Harrell er, uh, Heim takes snap, a handoff there to Gillen. Gillen through the hole, cuts it up, gets across the 30 before he's drugged down right there at about the 33, a big run to start there for Jaden Gillen, who got the handoff. Jack doing some lead blocking. And Dakota, you know, we mentioned with Coach, uh, kind of over the coaches show, they know this Bethany squad is going to be physical tonight. Yeah, and, you know, it's going to be hard to slow them down. So, uh just really got to see what, what we can get started here tonight, and it's just going to be up to the players. Ball on the 34 now. Bethany first and 10. Heim's going to pass. It's a quick out. It's going to go to Harrell over there on the far side. He gets across the 40 and is drugged down about the 41, so another quick gain. That's about seven on that one. And it'll sit up a second and three. Shirky boring, it sounds like, on the tackle yep, there. Mason boring, number 14. Yeah, sophomore made a lot, of, a lot of big plays last week. Yes, he did. And Bethany trying to go quick here. No huddle, getting the call from the sideline. 
Now Heim will feed it to him. Jack and Jane Gillen still in the backfield with him. Harrell split out. Calderon and Saunders as well, your trips receivers out there. Two to the near, one to the far. Now Jaden's going to go in motion. He's going to get the swing pass. Catch at the 40. Oh, stuck by Taylor Laird right there at the 42. Big tackle from the senior. Any talk about Taylor Laird just stalking him on the plane, waiting for him. As soon as he get that ball, just drills him in the side of the hip and takes him down. And read it all the way on that one. And uh, like you mentioned, just stalking it. Saw that. That's that's what we call one of those film plays. You know, you see that on film. And then you, you're able to recognize it very quickly. So now an early third down here for Bethany, a third and two on their own 42. And it's going to be an empty set. Time, Himes in the backfield by himself. he got split receivers, three to the far, two to the near. And he'll get the snap now, looking to pass, trying to go quick. He's got a man right there. It's Woods Harrell, of course, who's past the sticks, and he's drugged back a bit. But he will have the first down up to about the, it looks like, 47, maybe closer to the 48. And Dakota, that's, that's tough to defend right there. You spread yeah. them five wide, and you just find that soft spot. You just got to tackle Mark right as he gets past the first down marker. But uh, good job there by Ethan Matt and a host of Boomers dragging him down right at the first first and ten line. Yeah, and Eric, don't don't be afraid to, to cut in when you see some big for us too. So he's got a great view down there on that sideline and paying attention. Uh, Heim in the gun. He's got Gillen in the backfield with him. That's Jaden. They'll run a little speed option. Pitch out to Jaden. He's got the sideline. Cuts up across the 50 into Boomer territory for he's brought down at the 45-yard line. That's going to be another nice game there for Bethany, and they are moving the ball efficiently here on this first drive. That's going to put it at about a second and one. Yeah, and Eric, you mentioned that, that strength and size. They do go pretty solid across the line, 245, 245, 195, 200, and 240. Second and one, a handoff here now to Jack Gillen. He's going to take it up the gut. He's going to drive forward. He's got about three or four boomers on, but he gets it across the 40-yard line inside now, the 40 to about the 37. And that is going to be another first down for Bethany there. Just needed one, got about oh, four or five there to go. Yes, but uh, what I did see on that play was uh, Boomers were trying to strip that ball from him, so maybe we can see more of that. Maybe we can get a successful ball strip tonight. And those good ones are, uh, are sure carries. You know, uh, Jack's going to be out in front a lot of times. Jaden, the one going to take the bulk of the carries. High in the gun. He'll hand off again to Jaden. And this time only just a couple, it looks like, as Jaden got swallowed by a defensive line. Good pressure there by the Boomers to stop that one up the middle. Jaden gets to just the 36, so a gain of about a yard, maybe two. Looks like that was number 55 for Woodward on the tackle was Kaysen Bourne and along with Ethan Matt as the help. Boy, Kaysen, a good young sophomore, making a lot Very of plays stout. out there early in the season. Very stout. So second and eight here for Bethany on the Boomer 35. Got about 8.25 to go in this first quarter. They're in some clock here on this first possession of the game. Heim in the gun. He's flanked by Jaden Gillen. Now fake the handoff to keep himself. Heim's got some blocks out in front, the 30-25. And now he finally gets tripped up there by Taylor Laird inside the 20 at about the 18. And Dakota, we talked about it. When he looks to run, Heim can take off in you know, four or five steps, and he's gone. Yeah, very you know, very good play there by him, and it just found every route to dodge the Boomers and finally dragging them down uh, close to the 15 market at the 18-yard line. So first and 10 now for Bethany. They are in the red zone. Get to under eight minutes here, taking a little bit more of their time, but still getting set quick. Behind in the gun, Jane Gillen with him there in the backfield. Got two receivers out far, one near. Heim takes the snap, going to fake the pass, quick zip pass to Woods Harrell, and he's met by Lucas Shirky and a host of boomers. He'll gain a few, gets inside the 15 to the 14, and so a four-yard gain there it looks like for Bethany. Sits up a second and six. They're going to call it second and five. Lucas Shirky, Mason Boring, and Hayden Hillier there on the tackle, led by Lucas Shirky there. Really like getting Woods Harrell out there in space and, and trying to get him some work. I'm back in the gun now. Jane Gillen with him. And, oh, almost a jump by the Boomers. And I think they are going to get him. Let's see. Yep, that's what they're yeah. signaling. Going to be some encroachment there by Woodward. Bethany going with a hard count. And so that's going to cost five yards and make, make this a second and short now for Bethany. Bethany not even going to huddle up. Just look to the sideline, gets their calls. Yeah, good point, Eric. You, you got to be careful and not get lulled into that. 
Heim now on the gun, takes the snap, fakes the hand, no, does hand it off to Gillen. Jane Gillen up the gut, fighting for it. He's almost in the end zone, and he does fall forward in, fighting through two boomers. That's a touchdown for Bethany on their first drive. They go 84 yards in about five minutes to get the first blood of the ball game. And just uh, Dakota, that's one of those. It's quick hit right there up the gut. You know, Eric was mentioning they were cheating up a bit, Woodward was, but Jake Gillen just powering through everybody. No, he, he, he's not going to stop. I mean, he, you're going to have to pull something out of the bag here, but um, great great job by Wood Renino uh, taking more time off the clock there than, than they did against Guthrie, so there's a start. All right, extra point here. That is Ryland Sanders with the extra point. That is up and good. And with that, it is 7-0 to start this one, 7-0-1 to go in the first quarter. We'll step aside for a quick break. Listening to Boomer Football on Z92. And welcome back here to Boomer Stadium. Dakota Wagner, Tyler Riggs, Eric Scott with you. And, uh, Eric, you mentioned it all along that drive right there for uh, Bethany, just that speed, using that, that size up front to be able to cap that one off. I mean, how the Boomer's going to try to adjust, you think? Yeah, carried him, what, a good five, six, seven yards right there. That is that is tough to stop. I mean, Gillen is a solid, both Gillen brothers, a solid 5'10", 215. That is a, a pretty stacked frame right there. So Bethany to kick this one off, and it is going to be their, their long kicker, if you will, Rustin Calderon, or Ruslan Calderon, excuse me. He is their long field goal guy and their kickoff guy. He's lined up for this one back for the Boomers. It's going to be Taylor and Laird. It should be Carson Medina, I believe. And now they're going to short kick it here, respect to the Boomer special teams. Fair catch called for by Lucas Shirky, it looks like. Nope, excuse 27. me, that's 27. Zathan Klingenpil. Zathan Klingenpil, so he'll catch it right there just inside the 30. You know that's not a bad nope, start. excuse though. me, ahead of the 30, they're going to call it, it looks like the 32. So Boomer starting with some solid field position. Not a bad, not a bad uh, uh, spot to start there for the Boomers. Um, I did see one of the coaches talking to Sam Cheap during the entire uh, defensive play there for decent defensive drive there for Woodward. So maybe, you know, trying to draw something up here for Woodward early. See how this goes here. Trying to work on that, uh, you know, line. Looks like this box being a little stacked there by Bethany. Chief's going to start out under center. And in the backfield there, Ace Long with him to the top one to the near here. No, excuse me, that's Hiller. Uh, Chief's going to fake the handoff, go for a deep shot straight away. Just couldn't rein it in out there was Carson Medina who was trying to get his man over the top. It looked like that was Sanders on the coverage, Ryland Sanders being able to take that one-on-one -on -one matchup. And, boy, an opportunity just a bit right there, Dakota, but good defense by Beth. You know, slipped through his hands, but uh, looks like Carson Medina is going to come out, and Lucas Shirky will replace his position. So second and ten now for Woodward. Chief's going to be out there with Hilliard in the backfield with him. Going to go under center, excuse me. We've got Tan Laird to the top. Looks like Cash Shipley at the top as well, and here on the near, Lucas Shirky. Shirky goes in motion now. Snap, handoff to Ace Long, up, or excuse me, to Hillier up the gut. He's going to plunge forward for about a yard and then be pushed back there, so they'll give him some forward progress near the 34, uh, but not quite. Brings up about a third and eight. Probably going to have to go for a pass play here if you want to get the first down, Tyler. Yeah, and, you know, you like that they're trying to establish that that physicality we talked about in the pregame, at least with these under center looks. But as you mentioned, now they're going to go back in the gun. Hill, you're still out there with Cheap, and he got two to the near here, two to the far in terms of the receivers. So a four receiver set, 6.15 to go in this first quarter. Boomers trail 7 nothing. need this third down. Quick snap, and Cheap tries to go to Sharkey. Oh, it's through his hands, picked off. Ryland Sanders, he's going to go back to the five, tackled at about the two, almost returned that one. 
And boy, an unfortunate turnover there for the Boomers. It was a little quick hitter, Dakota. Slipped through the hands of Lucas Shirky and went right to Ryland Sanders. You know, just when you think Lucas Shirky has the ball, maybe for a couple of yards of a gain, um, you know, it just goes to the tip of his fingers, kind of bobbles around, and somehow his defender caught it by the tip of his finger and gets to the, about the two-yard line. But uh, not giving up on the play, I think, was Sam Cheap there for the tackle. Played the ball skills, definitely, Eric, definitely did. So first and goal for Bethany. Here's where they'll start on the two. Snap to Kel with Whiska, handoff inside, and it'll bounce outside. Jane Gillen, he's into the end zone just like that. Bethany is going to be up 13-0, trying to make it 14 off a of one-play, two-yard plunge by Jaden Gillen. He's got two touchdowns early, and, you know, Dakota would have had the middle plugged up there, but nobody was outside because the middle was plugged up. Just, just couldn't get it there for Woodward. Just a rookie mistake there, and... <laughs> It's just, just tough to defend that on the two-yard line for sure. So it'll be Sanders on for the extra point here. 6.06 .06 to go in the first quarter. Bethany trying to make it a 14-0 game. Kick is up, and that is through the upright and good. So just like that, 14-0. Bethany on top. We'll step aside for another quick break. And you're listening to Boomer Football on Z92. And welcome back here to Boomer Stadium. Cody so Wagner, Tyler Riggs, Eric Scott, with you. And uh, boy, a quick, quick couple touchdowns. And uh, I, I, just, I don't know, Eric, you were down there. You saw there on the goal line. Was there really anything else the Boomers could do? I mean, you got two yards to defend, and everybody's packed in tight. Yeah, everybody's packed in tight. A lot of it's because that's kind of what they've shown. Uh, okay, it's just. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, now we got you. I tell you, I tell you. It's kind of what they showed early on, kind of in these short yardage situations. They kick it on, kick it to the outside to the right. It was wide open to the end zone. And it was. So now it will be called around on for the kick here. We're just going to get another chance. And Cody, you're still not out of this one. I see no, two scores you, early. Got time to recover. But you got to start establishing. You really haven't had anyone touch the ball yet. Short kick again here by Calderon. This one's going to be fielded. Looks like by Shirky there. Oh, Medina, he'll bounce it outside. He's got room. 40 and old gets tripped up hard right there at about the 40. But a great return there by Carson Medina. Found the gap, kicked it out to the outside. Going to start the Boomers with good field possession. Not the first time we've seen Carson Medina uh, get in there and, and really show um, who can turn on the Jets early in the first quarter. You know, we saw against it against Guthrie where he uh, took one back for about 40 or so yards. And, and way, way to go Carson Medina right there to get the Boomers some good field position. Yeah, that's what you want to see. Start down some plus field position, almost plus. Oh, sorry, I <laughs> didn't get it off. Yeah, that's one of those you wish you could you could show the replay on TV. He did not have a lot of room at all, and he was cutting in and out. You know, it was really impressive the field vision he had. That he does. Hand off inside here on first and ten. Ace Long going to get his first carry, and hey, a nice little five yards there, just about a little bit more than that. Excuse me, he gets up to about the 48 yard line. So. Um, Dakota, Ace Long, first carry, and they, he got a little bit of room to run file. You know, and that's what we that's what we haven't seen is we haven't seen Ace Long be able to get an open pocket, you know, get an open gap where he can uh, show what he's really made of. But, you know, that's that's a start there for Ace Long to uh, find something, and hopefully we can see more to come tonight. And he's right back out there. Got Ethan Matt going to be in that fullback up back spot, so this might be another power run here. Uh, Sam Cheap's going to be under center, second and about five. Man in motion is Cash Chipley on the outside. Now handoff inside the long, long going to plunge forward, put that head down. He's going to be close to the marker, might be just a yard short. Got into Bethany territory at the 48, needs to get to the 47, and it will be third and one. Good start there for the Boomers. Let's see if they can uh, convert here. Under five minutes to go now in this first quarter. Bethany on top, 14 to nothing. As uh, 
Shipley comes out, yep. Shirky comes in. Shipley out, Shirky in, as you mentioned. We'll see how they go here. Could try to go power again. Maybe so. We'll see. Still haven't seen Taylor and Laird have the ball just yet. And it'll be under center, Sam Cheap again. Ethan Madden in the up back position, Ace Long in the backfield. See if they hand it to him. Chief's going to drop back to pass. He's going to look over the top. They're going to try to take a shot to Taylor. Ball a bit underthrown, and it's picked off by Ryland Sanders. His second one of the nine back-to-back -back drives. That's going to be at the 20 right there. And, you know, Dakota, something I want to note from last year, they took shots at Joel Malaska. It was a D1 quarterback for this team. And Sanders, both times now, has fared better than Joe Malaska did last year. It's just insane. Just when you think Taylor and Laird has it. Eric, what do you got now? The, the vision by Sanders to recognize that that ball is going to be uh, underthrown, you know, and he quickly just came back around and stepped right in front of him. And Laird tried to do everything he could to kind of play defender there and was unable to uh, knock it away. Yeah, Eric, and you mentioned that, Taylor. He's got great ball skills himself, but that is just one of those that, as you mentioned, Sanders got to him before. So. Just read it perfectly there by Sanders. Yeah, tough break for sure. So now Bethany going to have it on their own 20, first and 10. 4.27 to go in this first quarter. They lead by two scores. Boomer defense going to have to answer here. It's going to be Will Wiska back there. He's with Gillen, Jake Gillen. Now quick pass by Will Wiska. It's batted away there right at the line of scrimmage. And it looked like, trying to see who that was. That might have been Josiah Beza. Let's we'll see here. It's 32. I'm seeing 52, maybe. 52 or 32. 30. You might be right. It might be 32, 32 on that one. 32 looks so like be, Zane Weibel. I've got, for 32, Josiah Beza. That's what I got, which makes sense. So, yeah, it's yes, 32. Yes, you're, so right, you're right. Beza out there. We mentioned he was starting today. because Manuel. Yeah, Manuel Banuelos injured, unfortunately. Not sure on his time of return. And so Beza making a play there. Second and 10 now for Bethany. 4.24 to go in this first quarter. Empty set here was Wiska's all by himself in the backfield. Two to there, three to the far. Wiska going to drop back to pass. Quick pass. That's a bit of a duck, and that's going to fall incomplete. Didn't even get to him. Had pressure. It was Beza again getting his hands up, almost affecting that one. I think, I think he actually got a piece of that at the, uh, on the pass. It looked like it, Eric, because I haven't seen Kelvin Wiska throw many bad passes. So... Good call down there on the field to see that one. And Beza, two quick impact plays here, brings up a third and 10 for Bethany. Now let's see if the Boomers could get a stop. Wiska empty sit again, try to get the Boomers to jump. No avail, almost, but not quite. Got two receivers to the near, three to the far here for Bethany. That one, Wiska gonna change the play there, change the coverage at least. Takes the snap, drop back, sees look, looking quick, going over the middle, got a man. It's Woods Harrell down the middle, 55, 50, 50, 40, Going the other way, 30, 25, 20. He might be uncatchable, and he is into the end zone for the touchdown. There was a flag way back here, though, so this one might be coming back. Eric, do you think this is in the area of holding? Yeah, I do think it was in the area. Uh, even the coaches are saying come back. Yep, yep, so it is coming back. Big break there for the Boomers, and that's going to make it a third and very long. But that's exactly what I was talking about earlier. Of course, they didn't go over the top. They, they you know, it was a strong straight pass, but, you know, but you know, they were looking a little deeper than the Boomers were expecting. Yes, sir, you are correct. And, you know, good call on that, Eric, because that's – when you get a physical team like this, you know, and Bethany, like you mentioned, you got to start cheating up, and then that opens that stuff over the top. That's what the Broncos want to do. Looks like we have Sam Cheap down here holding his, his hand, his throwing hand. Yeah, looking like he's down on the sideline. See uh, – Kicking his helmet around. Looks like Cooper Latall and Sam, and uh, Ace Long playing some catch. Not sure who they – we got in the basket. Maybe uh, – Maybe Ryan Douglas as the two deep back up there, so I have to monitor that. But third and long here for Bethany, third and 20. It's going to be Will Wiska back to pass. He's looking. He's under pressure. He's going down. The Boomers have a sack, and it looks like Hunter Harrison there as well as Luis Corral, and they got a pin inside the 10. And, boy, Dakota, that is well needed to see that pressure. You know, we haven't had kind of like one of those stops, you know, all season long yeah. just like that just yet. And Ethan, Matt, as well as Hunter Harrison, yeah. just like you said, all of those guys getting a good hit on him. And you like to see the physicality there, you know, for the Boomers, especially coming, giving up a touchdown that got called back. You know, even that can bring you down a little bit. But, you know, he fought he fought through a hold, actually, to get back. That's, that's what they do on that three-man front for sure. And now Bethany have to putt from their own end zone. It's going to be cold caller on this one as a sky-high punt. It's not even going to get to the 30. Oh, it takes a bounce past the 30, 
And now to about the 34, so Woodward gonna start in plus territory at the Bethany 34. And Dakota, it looks like, oh, there was a flag and another hold. This one against Bethany, and now you probably take the repunt here, right, Eric? It looks like maybe you take the repunt. Yeah, I think when you're this close, you take the repunt because I, I mean, they're backed right up against the back of the end zone. So, yeah, Cole Calderon's going to be standing almost on that very back line, if you will, um, to that point. So this is no, nope. cool. looks like they're going to nope, decline it and bring uh, bring it up here. I, okay. And I somewhat understand <laughs> that because it really wasn't a very good punt, right? You know, and so I think you know you kind of look at that and well, where you are, you've got great field position. Might as well just go with it. Well, maybe it's a situation where, and and I had seen as much film on Calderon as a punter. Maybe they feel that was just a lucky kick. I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's me guessing, you know. Uh, but either way, Dakota, you were right that Sam Cheap right now, at least, not on the field. Oh, wait, he's coming, he's coming off yeah, from the sideline. Yep, yes. yep. And so Ben Cheap was going to be in there, but now Sam's out there. So Cheap looks like he's okay after checking up with the trainer. Good to see. So Boomer start first and 10, 3.15 to go here in the first quarter. A chance now with a short field get something on the board. Chiefs going to be under center. Ace Long there in the backfield. He got one receiver to the near, two to the far, and tight end loose corral lined up as well. Chief going to take a snap, fake the handoff. He's going to roll out to the far side. He's looking. He's going to fire a dart to Taylor Laird, but a pass broken up right there. Coming from the backside, Taylor, or, uh, Taylor Heim jumping in front of that one, the quarterback playing safety, reading that one all the way. It'll be interesting to see, you know, how Chief adjusts here because, when he came over here, they actually added more tape to his throwing arm uh, right around in the elbow, elbow area, so that you know, adds a little bit more restriction. Right, and if it's uncomfortable for him to throw that, as you mentioned, essentially, that's going to be tougher. He's going to have to fight through that, so we'll see how we go there. Cheap, second and 10 now for the Boomers. Cheap's going to be under center, long in the backfield, dot in the eye. Two to the ear, one to the far. Cat, uh, Shipley's the far. Now in motion, goes boring. Snap, handoff inside the cheap. Oh, man in the backfield on him. It's Will Strong, the big D tackle right there all over. It makes the tackle. Long did good to get back to the line of scrimmage. That sits up third and 10. So third and 10, 250 to go here in the first quarter. Woodward trying to convert, got some good field position. Looks like Taylor Laird's going to come back out for this play. Yeah, he was out on that last one. It was boring. Medina and Shipley, the receivers out there. Still haven't seen Taylor, you know, get anything in his hands just yet. They've tried to go to him a couple times, just haven't quite found it. Just reading him too well. Cheap going to be under center again. Long in the backfield wasn't too too far once in there. Cheap takes snap, takes the handoff. He's got some pressure. Going to go with the screen, but Long can't quite come up with it. That one just kind of floated over him a little bit. He couldn't quite pull it down. That might have been some open field to run with right there. But instead, it will bring up a fourth and ten for the Boomers. See if they decide to go for you here. Kind of in, in an interesting field position where you don't necessarily want to punt. I don't know if you can trust a field goal from this deep. What do you think, Eric? I think. <laughs> Still, that, boy, that, that mic's playing tricks on you. There you go. Maybe Man, I don't know. If <laughs> uh, you know, you kind of want to see what Ace Long could do at some point, you know, because we've seen the videos where he can definitely kick it. Cheap going for it on fourth down, dropping back to pass, escaping pressure, stepping up, floating. He's got man in the end zone, Suka Shirky, but he can't come up with it. The pass just a bit over the top, and that's going to be a turnover on downs, a broken play. Cheap escaped some pressure and tried to float one to the back line there and just couldn't quite connect with Lucas Shirky, unfortunately. You know, you like to see it, you know, uh, especially get that long ball going going towards the end zone. Oh, but and it was there. Just a, just a tick over thrown there for Shirky, and it would have probably just landed right towards his hands if it was just a click under. It's not an easy catch. It's one of those you got to make over your shoulder. Um, but like I said, that ball just didn't carry for an extra couple yards. Yeah, it actually is a pretty good strong throw for how he threw it. You know, he threw across his body coming back, you know, away from the intended target. So, you know, you can understand. And he, and he put that really kind of in a good good spot to overthrow it if he had to. Yes, sir, Eric, you're correct. And that was a catchable ball only by Lucas Shirky and nobody else if it was going to be caught. So first and 10 for Bethany the other way. It'll be Heim handed off inside to Jake Gillen. And Gillen going to be able to push forward there for a few yards, picks up across the 40 to the 41, so about a gain of seven, set up a second and three. 
And Eric, it looks like is Sam still getting checked on down there? Yeah, I think he came he came back over here and he's uh, talking to the trainer and um, you know kind of the the, the physician uh, physician. I can't say that word apparently. <laughs> hey, uh, the English teacher ago. right there. Um, you know, it, uh, coming over and talk to Matt Harrington as well over here on the sideline, kind of just getting it looked at, telling him you know, what he's feeling, all that kind of stuff. And that's you know, it says a lot for an athlete that he's actually willing to admit what he's feeling. And now second down here, a run by Bethany. It's going to be who else? Jake Gillen plunging forward. It's going to be across the 50-yard line and into Boomer territory at about the 48, it looks like. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, just past the 49, almost the 48, as a first first down for Beth. Looks like Taylor Laird, as well as Ethan Matt from a push, got there, and Taylor Laird uh, was able to bring him down. Good, good tackle there to save some more yards. Under about a minute 30 to go, got a minute 20 to go in this first quarter now. Hines going to be in the backfield, first 10. Got Jack going, flanking him. Jack's got the long here, Jaden's got the short. Inside handoff now. Oh, pull by Heim. Heim's going to take himself. He gets some space out to the 40. There's a flag down. Heim gets across the 35 before he stopped to the 33. And Eric, is this another holding it looks like maybe? Yeah, it's going to be a hold. Uh, I believe it's going to be 87 of uh, Bethany. Uh, he just kind of grabbed a hold of him and started driving him to the sideline right in front of the official. And there you go. So as Eric mentioned there, 87 Baylor Tibbetts. And you can see on the sideline, at least from our perspective, he was uh, signaling over there, kind of asking what he did wrong a little bit, it looked like, to the coaches. So that will back up Bethany and uh, save another first down because Taylor Heim, Dakota, man, he is, once he gets a little bit of space, he's, he's, he's every, out there. He's everything that, uh, that they talk about about him, so living up to the hype. So that's going to make it a first, and it looks like push it back into Bethany territory. They're going to be at their own 46 now. It's going to be about a... Uh, First and 18, if you will. I'm going to call it first and 15. Under a minute to play here in the first quarter. I'm in the gun. Going to take a snap. This time he will hand off to Jack Gillen. Gillen up the gut for just a couple yards before he is stopped there at the Bethany 48. He'll bring up a second. And, off. and so that will be second and you see now that, that got correct. Second 14. So it was first and 18. And out second and 14 there, there. 30 seconds to go here in the first. There is 25 on the play clock, so Bethany will have to snap this as the play clock just a couple seconds ahead. Heim gets the signal from the sideline. They're in no rush, though. Heim line everybody up in the gun. Jack going with them. Two to there, two to the far on the receivers. 13 seconds to go now. Snap taken. Takes the, the handoff now. Passes out to White Geisler there on the edge. He gets up across the Boomer 45. Gets tackled at the Boomer 41. Gains a good chunk of yards, and that will do it for the first quarter. Bethany going to have a third and short on the uh, to start the second quarter, and they lead 14 to nothing here over your Boomers after one. You're listening to Boomer Football on Z92. And welcome back here to Boomer Stadium. Coda Wagner, Tyler Riggs, Eric Scott with you as we look to begin the second quarter. Bethany going to have a third and short. And Eric, um, you know, for Bethany here, or if you're Coach Luchin, are you looking for them to, to pound away up the middle or you kind of watch that little, you know, shot over the top, you think? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> And 
And under center is Taylor Heim. They try to get the Boomers to jump to no avail. Now Heim will check back to the sideline. He's got Jack Gillen dotting the eye back there. Bethany in kind of a tight formation. Got only two receivers, one to the near, one to the very far. And Heim going to take snap. They will hand off to Jack Gillen. And right there to meet him is the hole is a Boomer. But Jack going to drive forward up to the 30. My goodness, it was Lucas Shirky there that tried to meet him. But Jack Gillen lowered those shoulders and just kept moving and got that first down. Kid, kid looks like an absolute beast to me. <laughs> he is stacked. So first, first and 10 now for the Broncos. Start the second quarter, minute, or 11.45 to go in the half. And again, tight formation, Heim under center. This time Jaden Gillen in the backfield. Snap, fake the handoff. Heim's going to roll out. He's looking. Got a man in the flash. Going to go to the middle, though. He's got Wood Hero, Woods Hero open at the 15 to the 10 to the 5. He'll jump into the end zone. And it's a touchdown by Bethany. Woods Harrell, Dakota, that was something on film. I noticed with him, he really loves kind of eating up those underneath routes, and that's exactly what he did right there. You know, it, you're right, but to me, in my opinion, you, you can't tell me that that does not look like Nash Hunter on the field. <laughs> I mean, that kid looks. He's stacked, yeah. He's a big guy. Looks just like Nash. So 22 nothing now here with 11.30 to go in the first half. Bethany line up for this extra point. Rylan Sanders on for it. It's converted the first two. But Wesco the holder. Snap, ball down, kick is up, and that is good. Keep it right here since we just had a break. Uh, you know, Eric, what did you see on that play right there? It was good play action by Bethany. Thought Woodward maybe had everything covered. Did the Herald just kind of flash late it looked like, or was he just open there? Yeah, and uh, that's, you know, that little play action right there. It's one of those late developers, we call it, because Harold comes from the back side of the rollout. You know, Heim rolled out to the far. Harold is back on the near side. So um, just late developing. And like I said, Eric, he just opened. So he got to figure out a way to stop that up because Harold's had a couple big plays, had that touchdown call back that was just essentially kind of in the middle of the defensive rule on the post. So got to find a way to shut down Woods Harold. Saying at six foot one, one ninety five, he's got great speed. He's listed as a tight end, but they kind of play him definitely more as a slot receiver. So eleven thirty to go here in the first half. Boomers now find themselves down twenty one to nothing, and trying to find something in terms of offensively. Still dealing. Believe we were seeing Sam cheat there last update. Still kind of working on some things. We'll see if he's back out there. I don't see him with the trainer down there currently. So. See if that arm's affect him too much or not. But back to return now are the Boomers, and they're coming up a little bit because of the short kicks by Calderon. Now Calderon goes a bit deeper, and backing up is Medina, and he's just going to let that one go into the end zone for a touchback. So the Boomers are going to start now at their own 20-yard line here. Got 11.30 to get a touchdown. What do we got to do, fellas, to get one in here and get the ball moving? Oh. What do you think, go? Uh, they're going to have to probably go with the passing game. You know, uh, they're too good on the defense for, for Ace to keep running through unless there's a gap there. So uh, gotta, probably going to have to find something through the air. Still haven't seen Taylor Laird get open just yet, so let's see if we can get him open or catch Shipley maybe and get something started here for this offense. And Sam Cheap is still out there. He'll be under center. He'll be Ace Long dotting behind him. Two receivers to one to the far. Cheap takes the snap. He'll hand off there to Long. Long got a little bit of a gap. Up the gut, across the 25, now almost to the 30. He'll be right near that first down marker, and they're going to mark him right at the 30. Eric, do you think this is a first down, or what do we, uh, what do we got here? Yep. Wouldn't be bad to take a nice long drive to your point there and, and cap it off. Second and very short, second about inches now after that ace long 10-yard run. Wouldn't be surprised if we see ace get it here just to, you know, maybe push for that first down right here. Cheap in the gun, and now we got a timeout, it looks like. 
timeout by the Boomers. Coach Luchin didn't like what he saw there in alignment. So we'll go ahead and step aside with them all in this break. You're listening to Boomer Football on Z92. And back here at Boomer Stadium, Dakota Wagner, Tyler Riggs, Eric Scott with you on the call. Boomer's trail 21-0 here with 10.43 to go in the half, facing a second and inches. And, uh, Eric, you mentioned it there before the break, just that seeing that physicality established a bit, good sign, and, and more importantly, just getting ace, ace long for <laughs> some room to gallop a bit. And it looks like coming out of the timeout here now, so Coach Luchin. Extended a bit. And it looks like Sam Cheap out there. Ace Long going to be in the backfield. And Dakota, like you were saying as well, maybe trying to go with Ace here one more time yeah, to see if we get that first down. It's the best option, you know, just try to get it run it, run it up right off the guns, my my opinion, is what you should do here. Cheap in the gun, Ace with him. Oh, snap's going to go over his head. He's tracking it down. Finally dies on it at the 10, and a crucial, Crucial mistake there. Went from second and inches. This is going to be second along. There is a flag down late. I don't know what this one will be for here. Is that going to be a holding on top of everything? Let's see. I don't know. This will be either going to be a holding on the offense on top of the overhead snap. Ooh. Yeah, and I think you're right. I think they did decline it because that would have, instead of taking the overhead snap, Eric, it would have backed it up from the spot of the hold. So now you're right, replay the down, yeah. So now you're you're back there at third and 20 now after having second and inches. Really tough break there for the Boomers, Dakota, just when we thought yep. maybe you get something going, get the mistake. But still a chance. We've seen yes. them convert some long, Long third downs last year in situations like this. Got trips going here. Cheap in the gun, long with him. Trips to the near, one to the far. Cheap going to roll out to the near side. He's looking to pass, trying to find a man. Got a man short, but that's incomplete. Had uh, Mason Boring was trying to hit him, but draped all over him was Landry Locklear, the junior. Draped all over Mason there, now bring up fourth down. Looks So well covered by Bethany. That means Cash Shipley in his own end zone to punt here. Backed up. And Shipley going to get the snap. Puts boot in this one kind of high, not very long, and that will land at a, the 35. Try to take a roll, but finally be down by a Boomer right there. Lucas Shirky will have it. And Bethany going to start in Boomer territory. It looks like at about the 37-yard line, 38 maybe, is where they'll have that one marked. 9.23 to go in the half. Bethany going to threaten here. They're up currently 21-0 and looking for more. And, you know, guys, we saw a kind of a Boomers almost be able to stand up last, you know, last drive. See if we get another one here. It's going to be Kel Wiska coming on at quarterback. He's going to have Taylor Heim out there with him, so they've got both athletes on the field. Heim's going to be a receiver to the near. Jane Gillen in the backfield with what Wiska got. Geisler out there as a new receiver for Harrell, and it looks like maybe Calder on the other far receiver. What well, Wiska going to take the snap. He's going to keep it himself, make a man miss up to the 30. Now he cuts it back. He's got open field up to the 20, 15, 10. It's a race to the pylon, and he's won it. Bethany scores again. Kel Wiska. You know, we called him a traditional thrower. He turned on the Jets there, found a hole, cut it back, and Bethany scores from 37 yards out to make this one potentially 28-0. Never looked back there, but good job there by Taylor Laird just trying to track him down, and a couple more yards he may be able to save it. And just, just that cutback by Wiska, I think, is what got Taylor 
Yeah, he was tracking them well to your point, and then just that back cut was, was dangerous. Them. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's that's a great point, Eric. Because what Wiska there for a second, you know, it looked like he may have, you know, handed it off, but did not. And the extra point is good from Ryland Sanders. We'll keep it right here for right now, since there's full 9:13 to go in the half. Bethany up 28 to nothing. And, and guys, Guthrie last week used a, a four touchdown second quarter to kind of get separation. Now you kind of find yourself in a spot if you're the Boomers where your back's against the wall. You, you got to find something on this offensive drive here. One thing I saw is when Taylor Laird was uh, walking down the side where all those players were before going into the huddle, he was waving his hand saying, let's go, let's go, let's keep going. Yeah, I got to keep that energy up. I mean, it's a tough spot, Eric, but, you know, you've been, you've been in situations like this before where you find yourself down a bit. How do you try to keep that morale up and keep guys fired up? Yeah, for sure, and I'm sure that is what Coach Lucian and crew is preaching in the huddle there. Like I said, just go do your job, clean up some of those mistakes, and see if you can fight your way back into this one. So it'll be Ruslan Calderon on here for the kickoff. He went deep as the Boomers brought it up, scrunched up the formation the last time. Now they've got them kind of stacked back to normal with Taylor sitting back about the 20, Medina as well. This time, about a normal kickoff here for Calderon, filled up by Medina. He's going to try to return up the gut at the 15. Now get closed in on it. Ooh, open field tackle right there inside the 20 by a Bethany Bronco. And what are we going to start at about? It looks like their own 18 is where they'll mark this one. Usually Carson Medina is able to, you know, get around those guys. But this time they were just a little too quick for them. Um, and, and unfortunately he couldn't get around them in time. Yeah, you can tell Bethany playing with a little bit of swagger right now, it looks like. So we're just going to have to find a way to kind of break that and build some momentum. 9.05 to go here in the half. Boomers take over, trailing 28 to nothing after 0-18, first and 10. It's going to be Sam Cheap out there. He'll be ace long in the backfield. They'll go under center here. Got two to the near, one to the far, and then a loose crowd on the near side as a tight end. In motion goes Taylor Laird across the formation. Cheap takes the snap. He'll hand off the long. Long trying to cut it back. Gets a few yards up to the 20. And that's where he'll be dropped right there. So saw a little bit of a hole, but just quite could get much more than that. He'll gain two, and it'll be a second and eight. Well, and, you know, to that point, to add on that, Eric, you're down 20 to nothing, but you still have the clock with you. It's early second quarter, and so you're afforded that opportunity to be able to maybe do that a bit still. Shotgun here for Sam Cheap. He's got Long with him. Now two split to both sides. Taylor goes in motion across the formation. Hand off again this time to Ace Long. Breaks a couple tackles, cuts it up to 30. Now across the 30, almost to the 35, but gets stopped there and has a first down for the Boomers. And Eric, just as you mentioned, hey, keep feeding, keep feeding the freshman the ball right there and see what he can do. Coach Lucha gave him, I think, uh, a compliment that's no higher than you could get. As he reminded of Drake Parker, the phenomenal boomer um, from Coach Lucha's first year here. First and 10, handoff again to Ace Long. This time gets about a yard forward before he's been and drug back. Maybe not even a yard, just a couple of inches there as a couple Bethany Broncos in on him. And Dakota, we saw a lot of this last week where, you know, you, you try to get that up the gut plunge, but, you know, defense adjust and start funneling things towards the middle. You expect um, maybe Woodard starts to look outside at some point here in terms of one of these runs? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if you can find someone that, that's going to give you a good block, you know, uh, maybe create a gap. Sit in that way, edge, yeah. And, and yeah. you know, that might be a route that Woodward might want to go. 
Under center now will be cheap, second and nine. Long in the backfield, Taylor layered in motion. Snap, fake the handoff, roll by Cheap. He's under pressure immediately, and he's going to be taken down and sacked. Bethany read that one all the way on the edge out there, trying to get that number. I believe that might have been Woods Harrell, and it wouldn't surprise me because he has been a holy terror on both sides of the ball. And sure enough, it was. He read that roll out perfectly. I mean, is that what you saw right there, Eric? Oh, trying to get that. <laughs> That is a tough break, so it brings up a third and 20 now here with 6.30 to go in the half. Been in the situation before. Just saw it on the last Just drive. See if we can get around it this time. We're going to take a timeout. Yep, and Woodward is going to take a timeout, so we'll go ahead and step aside with them on this one. They trail 28 nothing to the Bethany Broncos. You're listening to Boomer Football on Z92. And welcome back here to uh, Boomer Stadium. Cody Wagner, Tyler Riggs, Eric Scott with you. Boomer's trail 28 0. 6 19 to go in a half and facing another third and long. And, uh, you know, Dakota, we've uh, talked a little bit about, you know, kind of in these situations, at least finding what you can. You know, we saw that on the last third toy. They tried to go underneath, couldn't quite get it. Do you just, do you just try to load up and take that deep shot, you think, or do you? Try to play a little bit more conservative, get some back some yards, and see what you can do. I mean, you want to play it uh, conservative enough to where you're you're going to have that offensive line to protect the quarterback, obviously. Um, but you also want to get something down the field, maybe get one of those players uh, that can get a route going and and you know find the ball down the field for for a first down. But it's going to be uh, it's going to be a mission. So third and twenty, cheap in the backfield by himself. They split out Ace Long. Cheap looking to pass, a little bit under pressure, steps up, trying to avoid it. Now he's going to take off, breaks out of a tackle and gets tripped up there just past the line of scrimmage up to about the 25. Boy, we thought for a second he might have been able to find a little bit more space than that, but Bethany making the open field tackle. Brings up a fourth and long for the Boomers. Looks like Cash Shipley going to be on to punt. Back there, I believe that is a Gilland. Nope, that is White Geisler, the sophomore, back there to receive this punt. See if Cash could get a good boot into this. He had a good one last week against Guthrie. He did, you know, still trying to get that, that foot right in terms of, uh, you know, lining those punts. Takes the snap, gets it clean, and that one almost blocked. It gets skied up, and that's going to be a short punt, and Dole takes a horrible bounce, rolls back inside the 25. Out at about the, it looks like 23, so Bethany going to start near in the red zone. Eric, did, did somebody get a hand on that one? Yeah, they just, they look a bit off sync. Cash right there. Did face some pressure. It looks like Bethany with, went with a max punt block, if you will. So that might have affected things, too, because there's a couple of guys off the edge close to getting that one. So Bethany going to set up first and 10 at the Boomer 23, 5.22 to go. They're threatening to try to score another one. So it'll be Kel Wiska in the gun. He's going to have Jack Gilliland with him. Two trips to the far. Nobody to there is a tight end on the near side. Snap, quick uh, swing out there to the receiver. That's caught up to the 20 or the 15, excuse me, now pushed down finally about the 10. So that's going to be a quick first down. That was 22 out there. That would be Jordan Strotter, uh, usually a safety, but they flipped him out there as, or excuse me, a linebacker, flipped him out there in the slot, and he picked up some quick yards, 13. That's going to be first and 10 for Bethany. They will have a chance to get a first down as the marker is about at the one, so I have to get inside the one, maybe not quite to the goal line. 
in the gun's going to be Wiska. He's going to be Jack Gillen with him. And it's a low snap. And, oh, tripped up. A bit of a collision there. That looked like a, a bad exchange between Wiska and, and Jack Gillen. Gillen just essentially had to fall down on it. And that will be a loss of a couple. We'll bring up a second along now for Bethany. So second and 12 from the 13 now, 425 and countdown. Will Wiska still out there as a quarterback. Jack Gillen with him in the backfield. Two to the near, two to the far. Hines the closest here on the near. Will Wiska back to pass, looking quick throw. He's got a man, and it's caught at the five and tackled inside the five. That looked like Jaden Gillen, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, that was again right there, Jordan Strotter, who had that one. So back to back catches there for Strotter on pass attempts, gets positive yards. And now Bethany going to face a third and short here. Looks about third and one from the two. So they got to get just about inside the one to get this first down. Let's see if the Boomers can come up with a stand. This might be four down territory for Bethany if they're up four scores here. Well, Wiska's going to be the quarterback. He's got both Gillens flanking him. Takes the snap, hands it off inside to Jaden. Jaden going to try to bowl forward. I think he's in there. He is. That is another touchdown for Bethany. Jaden Gillen having a big first half here on the ground. Been able, really, Eric and, and Dakota to just plunge in on these short short yard situations. It's unfortunate there. Just couldn't stop him there for the defensive line, unfortunately. Yeah. Just uh, lining up and playing big and ugly out there, it looks like, is what Bethany's doing. Yeah. <laughs> The extra Ooh. point here almost blocked by Taylor Laird, but the extra point good by Ryland Sanders. So 35 to nothing here for Bethany, trying to take out a measure of revenge, it seems like, from last year to go of that 17-12 ball game. That was uh, quite the ball game, you know, but uh, definitely trying to get their revenge here. I, you can tell. Yeah, they have come out sharp and focused and have been pretty much on it from the jump. Two picks by Ryland Sanders early for Bethany on the first couple drives for the Boomers. And then uh, too much Dayton Gillen and, and Woods Harrell and Taylor Heim and Whit Wiska as well, all just kind of doing what they are doing. And, and like Eric mentioned a second ago, that size difference on the line right now definitely showing itself as uh, Bethany has essentially just been able to do what they want in terms of the run game. So 337, Boomer's going to have, uh, they've got one timeout to work with here, so you're kind of not in a two-minute situation, but you almost, I wouldn't say treat it like a two-minute situation, it's what they call that four-minute offense, where you're, you may be afforded a run play or two, but generally you're going to probably be looking to pass here and get some things going in that respect. Yes. Laird and Medina back to receive the kick. As Ruslan Calderon on for this kick. He has gone short. He's gone long. We'll see what he does on this one. Looks like Boomer's going to play it neutral. Definitely it's been a focus to kick it away from Taylor Laird. I think we'll see that all season long. Where nobody wants to give Taylor a shot to return it. We see, we have definitely seen what he can do with the, oh, ball, yeah. the ball, especially against a bigger team like Bishop McGinnis. You know, runs it back for 80 yards last Called season. Calderon now puts a boot into this one, and sure enough, kicked away from Taylor, but they had him shifted, and Taylor's going to fill off a hop at the inside the 10. Now gets up to 15, but he's got a host of Broncos there on him, and he'll get taken down right at the 15. I like the idea of trying to get Taylor, you know, a, a chance to return that, but just the way you had to do it let up a lot of uh, Bethany free runners, if you will, to be able to get to that one. Not catching it there. Oh, there you go. Sure. So it'll be a first and 10 from the 15 for the Boomers. 3.30 on the clock to work with. Chief back in the gun, looking to pass. Going to fire it to Talens. Got him there at the uh, 18. And, boy, he gets chopped down right there at the 18. Good tackle in the open field. It looks like by... Everson, oh, here you go. Yep. Uh, this makes a lot of sense. Evanson Malaska, his older brother Joe, the uh, D1 corner uh, that we were talking about that Bethany lost last year to graduation. So 
young man getting in there as a freshman and uh, maybe picking up some lessons there from Bigger Brother. So second and about seven for the Boomers. A little three-yard gain. Under three minutes to go now, 2.50 and count down. Cheap in the gun. Ace Long with him. Two to the near, two to the far. Long go, or Cheap going to take snap. Look at the pass. Got a man on the sidelines. Cash Shipley. Shipley will step out of bounds near the 25, but it looks like maybe about the 23, 24, excuse me. Looks like a That's yard short or two. Yep, going to come up about a yard short, be a third and one, but got out of bounds, so the clock stopped. And, you know, Dakota, we talked about getting that passing game going. That's that's an easy way right there. If you find some out routes, it's quick, and it should be there with guys like Tan Laird and Cash Upley. I think what we're going to do here is uh, definitely run the ball. Yeah, try to get maybe try Ace Try to get up Ace there. Long up in there and, and see if he can uh, push down for a first down. Cheap of the gun. Ace with him. Two to the near, two to the far. Sam going to take the snap. Going to hand off sure enough inside Ace Long. He's met by about three or four Broncos right there. That broke down quick. I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage. He did not. Got pushed back a yard, and it's going to bring up a fourth and two. And they blew that up quick. And got a man. Looks like not quite sure who that is coming off of the Boomers. Who is that? Eric, do we got on the sideline? Looks to be like it. Peyton Carter. Might be it. For 52. 52. Oh, it can't quite catch it right now, Eric. You're uh, cutting out. There. there you go. There you go. Gotcha. Ooh, that yep. is. Yep. Is it 52? Yep. Okay. So, I yep, that would be Peyton Carter, sure enough. So, fourth and two, the Boomer's going to punt here. Cash Shipley on for this one. He'll get it, and this time Cash gets a boot into it. This is carrying over into the 40, and Heim almost tackled right there on the reception, but Heim's going to return this one. Gets across the 40, 45, 40, 30. He's still coming and finally gets chopped down. I'm trying to see who that was. on that. That's Cash Shipley, the punter, making the tackle. And that's but, not the man, first time that he has made a tackle. Taylor Heim, man. Whew. Oh, had you for a second, Eric. There you go. We're trying. He's trying, folks. Working out the kinks on that sideline, Mike, to start week one there. But, boy, good return. It, oh, now I got you, Eric. Right. Yeah, and Hines a tough one to take down. Six foot five, 190. That is a big frame. He is in the gun now. First and 10 for Bethany. He'll hand off inside. It's Jaden Gillen. Gillen makes the move, runs over a man, gets across the 20, almost to the 15. And Jaden Gillen right now with space and downhill. And Dakota, he is punishing this Boomer defense. I mean, he just absolutely stiffed armed his defender in the way. And I couldn't see who it was, but he is not letting up anytime soon. Now, all the uh, Bethany runners right now, whether it be the Gillens, whether it be Heim, whether it be Wiska, I mean, they are downhill and in a hurry. Minute 20 to go here in the first half. Bethany up 35 nothing. Got a first and 10 in the Boomer red zone at 17. Snap taken. Read it. And now, oh, Boomer's got him trapped in the backfield. Thought that was handed off to Jay Gillum, but no. Taylor Heim kept it. The Boomer's right clean. Had about four or five of them right there. Yeah. Had you for a second. Got you hide the ball. <laughs> oh, boy. One of those saints, one of those saints. But, no, Eric, good point right there as he was trying to make. Boomers read that finally, you know, on the high of the ball. Heim and Wiska have been pretty good at it, but this time they snuffed it out. Second along now here for Bethany. Heim going to take snap. Now hands off inside to Jack Gillon, and again, no space there. Who else? How about how about Josiah Beza filling in for Manny Benuelos? He's been making some plays out there, the sophomore. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and able to do it two downs in a row to that point. And going to force a third and 14 here. There's just 39 seconds to go in the half. So I believe they catch who took that timeout. Not quite have it updated yet on the scoreboard. So, so Bethany burned one of their th three remaining. They've got two left here. 
and maybe Coach Arthur and squad, uh, crew trying to draw something up. Dakota, you got to watch over the top of the Boomers. I imagine you're just trying to make sure you don't give up that first down. Yeah, if I was to put anyone in the backfield, it would definitely be uh, Taylor Laird and Lucas Shirky. Yeah, um, troll. May, yep. Maybe even uh, Cash Shipley, you know, because he stands at 6'4", and, you know, he has a good arm's length of reach. So go so, with that three deep look, essentially. Yeah, just, just yeah. try something. Uh, maybe even try to get Mason Boring in that, in that mix-up somewhere. Um, just trying to find something here so uh, we can stop Bethany from scoring going into uh, the half. Boomers will receive the ball out of the half, so if you could get a stop here, it might be a big momentum. Hyman in the gun, he'll take the snap, looking to pass. Pressure on him, there's a flag. This might be a holding as is, but he's trying to be chased down by Hunter Harrison. Gets away, gets across first down. Oh, bowls over a Boomer, and I think he got pushed out of bounds, but that was a violent collision. I believe that might have been Lucas Shirky that took that. There is a flag way back here. I think that's going to be holding, and it will. So wipe away the first down, but my goodness here, Taylor Heim finished in those runs. We have seen that all night. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that was a violent collision, but Heim's a tough dude, so. And it was the hold, though, back it all the way up. It's gonna be a third and even longer now as the ball was on the uh, about 21, 22, and it's going to be backed up now there to the 39. So You know, Tyler, you take a look at that, and you see he gets at the goal line, and he just has somebody, but someone runs in. Yeah, and just like, completely, like Eric said, yeah. Not really blindsides, but in a way almost has that momentum just for that hit and just knocks him out of bounds like did, right at did the goal Did all line. they could. So 29 seconds, third, and extremely long here for Bethany. They got to get all the way to the 12th. Heim, back to pass. A little bit Ooh, under pressure. Like now he's sacked from behind on the back end. He'll go down. And that was trying to see here. I believe that was oh, 44 got a flag. and got a flag again. But that was Luis Crow, the senior blindside in Heim on the back side to get the sack. We'll see what the flag is. Looks like it's going to be sacked. Eric, we got a read on it down there at all? Ah. Unsportsman, no, sideline warning, okay. Sideline warning, okay. Yeah, on the boomers, right so. On. Yeah. It should be a fourth down, so I don't believe, unless they called replay of the down. Yep, fourth down, so fourth and extremely long here for Bethany. They do not have to snap it. It looks like they won't with 10 seconds and count down on the clock. That is going to take us to halftime. Boomers build a little bit of momentum, getting some stops, but they still trail 35 to nothing here at the break. We'll go ahead and step aside, come back with the halftime show. You're listening to Boomer Football on Z92.
Trail 35 nothing here to the Bethany Broncos. And, um, you know, I got Eric with me up here in the booth now. He's come up from the sideline. And, Eric, I, I think we could agree it was just it, Bethany seemed like they were pretty much on it, trying to get some revenge from last year, and they've seemed really sharp. And Woodward, for whatever reason, just seems a little off kilter right now. Well, you know, I think there's some multiple factors. You know, and you talked about even during the pregame how Bethany last year coming off that loss against Woodward went on a run. They didn't yep. lose until – I think you said week 10, I believe. Yeah, right there at the yeah. end. And then that first round of the playoffs, it was a tough loss. <laughs> it was yeah, a tight one. yeah, you know, and this is a really good Bethany team. You know, and that's, that is one thing you can't take away. You can't look at the fact, you can't look at classifications or anything like that, you know, whenever you play a team like Bethany. Because, you know, they, like you said, there's D1 talent on this team. Yeah. You know, and I think coming off the loss last week, you know, just talking to, you know, some of the, some especially freshmen, because that's mainly what I have in class. You right, know, talk, right. Talking to some of those young kids, they're just, you know, they're a little down, you know, after last week's loss. And, you know, I, again, like I said, hopefully, you know, as you go into the second half here, you just got to work and trying to build on, uh, build a little momentum, build on the things you're struggling with going into next week. For sure, for sure. While, while we got a chance here, I do want to mention, uh, send some thank yous and some shout outs, if you will, to our sponsors here with us on Z92. I Plain Sire, Top Cat Formal Wear and Accessories, Dairy Queen, who's our halftime sponsor, Caleb Roach Insurance, Great Plains National Bank, Dr. Chris Lee Mosley. First rep story like uh, Dakota, you know, obviously it made the news and things like that, but there, there's connections. You know, there, 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 are, there are boomers that play up there. There are many Woodward. Uh, graduates on campus up there, you know, so it was good to see Coach Walter and his staff kind of make that, um, you know, make that get to Dakota and kind of show that they're in support of him as well. For sure, for sure. Um, take a look here at some quick scores while we can, getting some drinks taken care of. Greatly, greatly appreciated. Very much so. Coach Hickman. <laughs> yeah, Coach Hickman. Shout out Coach Hickman. Great man, great man for sure. Um, coming in clutch on that. But um, let's look at some of these scores. Start Try to kind of start with the uh, district, if you will, for Woodward and see where some of their opponents are lining up in that sense. We get pulled up here. Oh, this is Kerry Noble right now, 35-13 and a half. It's a top 10 Noble team. Here's an interesting one for you. Canadian Texas, always a powerhouse. They were playing Elk City right now. Canadian up 17. Who's seen D1 talent? I uh, uh, talking to Jason Harrison. He actually did uh, their week zero game, you know, and he was talking about how they're, they're a pretty good team. Down there in Elk City, the, you know, it's good to see the Elks kind of battling, especially against a team like Canadian. And unfortunately for us, that's only going to give them some momentum yeah. coming off. But even if it's a close loss, you know, that that's still pretty powerful. Well, tough ones to start in terms of, of games. So yeah. they've, they've fought through. Um, looking at some of those other ones, El Reno and Weatherford currently tied up at seven at the uh, second quarter right now. Cash, who's uh, in the district course here in 4A with Woodward, they're down to Elgin, 14 nothing. Um, do want to plug, of course, take this opportunity to plug quick scores over there. Friday night quick scores over on K101. CJ Montgomery, Chris Eubank over there tonight. Sean Kelly as well. They're keeping up to date on all the scores in the tri-state area. I know big one in Class B we were watching going into tonight, at least talking about it, was uh, that ceiling Laverne game. And, you know, Eric, I, I got to interview Gary Manuel for game night and, of course, spoke to Coach Matt Cox for Laverne. But Coach Manuel really felt like, with what they returned, that this was kind of that year to jump up and maybe do some damage. You're now in District 3 instead of District 1 with Shattuck uh, in Laverne and back of And at the half, Ceiling is up 28 to 6 in that one. So, yeah, you know, and that's Ceiling's only setting themselves up because they've got another year after this. Yes. That I think they're, <laughs> they're going to be pretty Still going to return solid, a lot of kids. You know, yeah. You know, the yeah. Ceiling athletics right now across the board is really good. You can't. You know, I'm sorry, even their middle school softball team, which we saw this year, you yeah. know, they've got some kids. You know, so, you know, Sealing's just kind of starting their – I don't want to say starting their rise because we know they're good, but, you know, they're they're kind of – they're making that true push for a gold ball this year. That they are. Well, we got about oh, seven minutes and change left here in the halftime break, so let's step aside for a break of our own. You are listening to Moore Football on Z92.
And back here at Boomer Stadium, Dakota Wagner, Tyler Riggs, Eric Scott with you as we are at the Digger Queen Halftime Show. Your Boomers trail 35-0 right now to the Bethany Broncos. Took a look around there uh, before the break. We we'll talked about a lot, of course, talked about Dakota Zamarco. Took a look around at some of those scores um, going on uh, across all of high school football right now. And, um, you know, Dakota, it, we get to the break here. We just talk about with Eric a bit about some of the things that just didn't work there in the first half. What do you want adjustments about? Well, to Bethany's credit on that, you mentioned trying to get something through there. It just hadn't been a lot there to work no, with through the air. really not. You know, you, Sam Cheap's getting – uh, pressured constantly. Not as bad as last no, week, yeah. but I think it's no, more of just the coverage being there. Yeah, they've definitely worked on where, where he's open, just uh, they're covering just too well on Taylor Laird and, and all those other guys like Cass Shipley and, and Lucas Shirky. And um, when, we, when they get breakaway, you know, we've seen them get good yards. Uh, you know, we've seen Taylor get a get a good reception there. And uh, other than that, just can't find anything, uh, you, know, you know, outside deep, uh, just all stuff that's small and just can't get anything going. Well, and I, and I mentioned in the pregame that this was a very senior-heavy Bethany squad. Turned a lot yes. of stars. It's all uh, Evanson, Alaska, the, the young freshman, carry on that kind of Alaska name. Alaska was a uh, D1 player last year for this Bethany squad. Graduated, went on, and, and he's playing at the next level. So, man, I mean, <laughs> they know how to breed that talent in terms of developing some of those guys. Um, but uh, we'll see what we can do in the second half. I, I get what you're talking about. You, you got to still try to maybe come out aggressive, especially you get the first drive here to start the half. The rumors will get the ball. So try to establish something. Try to get a little bit of tempo going. And, and, and I mean, momentum to, to come into this second half and, and to possibly, you know, put a couple points up on the board. Um, still, you know, we haven't scored any season points, but um, when we come out of this locker room uh, playing in front of the home fans, I, I think that some of that confidence is going to carry over, and I think that we will score, uh, you know, just to start things off. You know, uh, it may take a minute, but I, I do see us scoring uh, probably with Taylor Laird. Let's hope so. That would be nice for sure. Well, still got a few minutes left here in the half. Team starting to come back on the field, so we'll take our final halftime break. And on the other side, we will get you to the start of the second half. You're listening to Boomer Football on Z92. And back here at Boomer Stadium on Z92 and Boomer TV as well. Going to continue to mention that. Uh, go check them out on YouTube. You search Boomer TV. Or if you can't find it there, go to Z92Online.com. And we've got the link to Boomer TV. So we're, we're going both ways 
get all the bases covered, if you will, Dakota. Yes, sir. <laughs> in terms of that. And uh, got 12 on the clock. Both teams huddled back up here. Woodward going to receive the ball to start the second half and maybe try to find something to get that offense going, get some points on the board, and uh, we'll see what we can do with that. And, uh, you know, Eric, do you – how do I put this? If you're Coach Luchard right now, are you trying to, you know, Dakota said he would like to see some passing out of the gate. Are you still rolling with Ace Long, you think, in the run game, or are you as well trying to get something going in the pass game? Well, I think, like I said, you got to continue trying to do your thing right now. You can't can't get too wrapped up and catch up in a game like this. you just got to kind of continue to work and continue to build, to build especially, with, you know, young, young kids trying to make a difference like Ace, you know, and just continue. The, continue to pound it. You know, when you have those opportunities to go to the top, go to the top and take them and see if you can continue, get some of that on film. For sure, for sure. Well, they put three minutes back on the clock, I guess, because we're a little late out of the locker room. So uh, we could look, just, just discuss a little bit for tomorrow with college football. We've got a couple of games over on our stations, both here on Z92 and on K101. Over here on Z92, it will be the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Um, taking on the Arizona State Sun Devils there in Stillwater. That one, Cowboys favored by about 11, so um, expected to win. The Sooners, much different situation. They host Kent State, and they were favored by a full about, I think, 35 points, so that one should be a runaway. But, uh, no, Eric, I, I know for the Oklahoma State fans out there, kind of a mixed bag in week one where Spencer Sanders, I mean, by all accounts, what a fantastic game for the seniors to start the season, the super senior. But that defense eh, need a little bit of work, maybe. <laughs> That's, you know, I remember exactly several times. I was laying there we were watching the game. I was like, man, this defense, we got to figure something out because it's a little scary. But my question for tomorrow's game is, is this a future Pac-12 matchup or a future Big 12 matchup? Ah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> so all those questions are out there. You know, of course, that's a big storyline this week with trying to figure out what's going to happen between those two conferences. But, you know, absolutely, it's the defense for OSU. They've got to figure figure something out. And it's that pass defense. You know, losing those, that linebacking core they had last year, right, that's right. a tough loss. For sure. You know, and so, you know, and I know CJ's probably back there listening to <laughs> us. And he, he's probably, you know, saying the same stuff. And he's probably more frustrated than I was last week. Oh, so. he went to that game, Eric. I had to fill in for him Friday morning on news because he went to that Thursday night game. And he came back and said, boy, we got to work on that defense. <laughs> Dakota, yeah. what, what did you have? <laughs> uh, just looking around, you know, uh, when they come out of the locker room just to see who, was, uh, uh, who is out back on the field and looks to be like Peyton Carter is out there with – uh, only shoulder pads and okay. he's just wearing his IMBK uh, undershirt. So maybe not going to see Peyton Carter is what you're saying there in the second half um, as he was injured kind of late there in the first half. One of the linemen, as you mentioned, it looks like holding the shoulder maybe a bit. Yeah, so um, kind of limped up there. So that's unfortunate. See, we'll see who fills in for that. But get back to the college football side of it. We talked about OSU there. OU, you know, Dakota, of course, we're, we're a little bit maybe Crimson, Crimson fans. Yeah, um, yeah. But Sorry, just, uh, it, I don't know how much you could take away from being a, a team like UTEP. And I don't know how much you could take away from being a team like Kent State other than saying, as long as you go take care of business, yeah, that's the you, good you sign. Take care of business, <laughs> and, and, you know, that's the bottom line. Uh, just the college football world is, is so dramatic and crazy yeah, these days. Yeah. And yeah, it's could. it's with a whole new 12 playoff team coming in, what, 2024? Uh, 2026, maybe sooner if they could agree it's, to it's, work it out. It's going to be something that I that I'm uh, interested in just to see how that all lines up. For sure, it's, for sure. It's going to be something way different. And speaking of conference realignment, there is a big matchup tomorrow night, late night game, BYU and Baylor. Baylor going to Provo to take all the 21st ranked Cougars. That is a matchup of future conference foes, and we know that for sure. Well, you know. Oh. <laughs> well, we thought we had it worked out. So, you know, we, we, I kind of made that joke about, you know, conference realignment. Sure. You alluded to it a little bit again. But, you know, with Big 12, they're, they're kind of working out their media rights right now. Yeah. That change for the SEC, that OU and Texas go to the SEC, that's going to happen next year. Yep. So, you know, you're going to start to see some things roll here in the next couple of months. Oh, for sure. Well, with that, 12 minutes on the clock now, and we're ready to go here for the second half as it's going to be – uh, Ruslan Calderon kicking off for Bethany. Taylor Laird, Carson Medina back deep to receive. And that one, a good, good kick by Calderon. Carries into the end zone 
for a touchback. No chance to return that one there for Mr. Laird. And the Boomers will take over at their own 20 to start out the second half. I mean, you talk about a kick. I he mean, finally got was, a good one, yeah. That was a boot right into the end zone. He kicked him high and short. He kicked him kind of more liner. And then that one, like I said, just got all of it. Hey, and I'll also. I'm going to try to mention. Uh, I'll also mention here that you know there's actually somewhat of a breeze down here. Um, oh, it's wind carrying. It say, wasn't yeah. quite as uh, as much of a breeze in the first first of the game. You know, for one, it feels good, but you know this is kind of what you start you start to expect in the falls to get a little bit of breeze. And oh, I think that helped them a little bit on the kickoff. Sure. For sure, and we get some of that cool weather tomorrow as well. I think high only at 77. That's beautiful. First and 10 for the Boomers. Cheap under center. He'll hand off now to Ace Long. Got the guy. He's got some room. Makes man. Oh, almost made a man miss, but got some yards before he was chopped down. I thought Ace was going to juke him. Got across the 25 there to the 27. We're going to have a hold. And oh, uh, yeah. Good catch there. Eric Flag on the field. Going to come back. Unfortunate because it looked like there was a good little hole open, but you got to assume probably now by the hole there and it'll back up the Boomers. Credit to Ace Long, though, you know, getting in there and, and fighting for some extra yards and uh, getting up after a, a pretty hard hit. Well, it, it to me on that tackle, what a statement it is for a freshman to have to be chopped low because they know they're going to have problems tackling line. That's a freshman. That's They're kind of like, oh, yeah, we, we got to go low on this I mean, kid. This kid's going to uh, show some uh, very strong leadership uh, throughout the couple of years. And, Let's you know, by so. his junior year, I wouldn't be surprised this kid is. Is, is a beast. We'll see where he is by the end of the freshman year. That might be a real might be a different story. First and 20 now for the Boomers back to their own 10. Cheap under center. Ethan Matt, a fullback. And hey, they're going to hand off to him because you've been calling for it all of about six, seven quarters. Now there's a fumble. Bethany's trying to say it's their ball, but the rest are saying it is down. Matt didn't quite get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe, maybe got back there, but it's going to break up second and it looks like 21. I feel like Ethan Matt in a situation needs to be used more, uh, like in a third one situation. Sure, sure. Um, you know, Ace Long just has the Jets, and uh, I would just use him, you know, like on first, second, possibly third. But if, you, if you're going to go for it on third and one, it's going to be Ethan Matt is what I would do. Eric, what you got down there? Yeah, and I, you know, it to me it looked like he it may have lost it before he come down, so I think the Boomers got away with the one there. Got a bit of a break. We'll take that. We'll take this. Going to be cheap under center here again. Second and 21. Matt in the fullback slot. Ace behind him. Split receivers each side. Cheap drop back to pass. Deep drop. Now looking. Still can't find anybody. He's under pressure. He's got two or three Broncos on him. He's going to be taken down right at about the one or two yard line. And just nothing open there again. Bethany, that was a coverage sack it looked like, Eric. I mean, did that, that looked the same way to you? Well, absolutely. And that, that was kind of the play, the corner and the safety coming over. They they essentially double teamed Laird. And, you know, it was obvious that's where Chief wanted to go. Um, there's just nowhere for him to go. And kind of, kind of like to see him take off a little bit. I don't know how much if his kind of arm is bothering him and he's sure. kind of worried about getting hit again. But. Yep. You know, you'd like to see him take off there, but again, that was as much, like you said, coverage. So bring up third and 30 for the Boomers on their own three. Cheap under the gun. Ace Long there back field. He'll take the snap. Oh, bounces off a tackler. Gets across the five up to the seven. Good little run there for Ace. I mean, it's not going to get you a first down, but at least make that punt somewhat easier. Where you're not backed up all the way in the back part of your end. He's going to make Cash Shipley's job just a little bit easier so you can avoid a safety like you did back in Guthrie, Guthrie last yeah. week. Yeah, that's, that's what you want to avoid here because you're in that kind of danger territory. We've seen Bethany load here on a, a, what they call a punt block max, if you will, where they just put everybody on the line, essentially. Not quite that now, as they'll have two returners deep. Looks like uh, White Geisler here to the near and to the far over there. That might be Everson Alaska. Shipley going to get the snap. Clean one, clean punt. Not carrying super far, but does get to the 40, and that's going to be down right there at the 40. So I think did as good of a job as he could. Eric mentioned to go the wind. I think he was going against the wind there. So um, as good as you could do with that. And a pretty healthy one by the looks of it. So Yeah, like I said, the wind has definitely picked that. You know, it's... <laughs> 
it's a light win by Oklahoma standards. That's right. Um, right. If you're anywhere else in the country, they'd be whining about how big how windy it was. But no yeah, joke. it definitely as it as it kind of traveled up and kind of hit its apex, it was in the wind and it kind of killed it a little bit. You know what, Eric? Speaking of that, just kind of off the subject of the game, I always preach that I will take a three-star high school West Texas quarterback to play the Panhandle because they deal with that wind similar to we do, and I guarantee you that guy's gonna be able to throw a ball through that wind. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's why <laughs> I'm always. You know, we talk about golf in Oklahoma. Oh, That's why man. golfers in Oklahoma are actually pretty decent because yeah. they deal with the wind. First attempt for Bethany. What Wisk is going to go with this quick swing pass. They get it on the edge there to Strotter. Strotter going to get taken down inside the 30 to about the 28. That's going to be a first down for Bethany as they uh, look to try to put some more points on the board here. 8.59 to go in the third quarter. They do lead 35-0 over the boom. Some familiar, uh, not a familiar face as a tackle is Cooper Latall. Okay. The, one of the smaller guys, uh, height-wise, gets a tackle and brings him down. So Cooper Latall out there getting some action. Good to see that. Still got most of the ones in. First attempt for Bethany. It's going to be with Liska in the gun. Gillen, Jaden Gillen with him, and Gillen going to take the handoff, try to go forward, only gets just a couple yards before a host of boomers blow him all the way back to line of scrimmage. They'll give him forward progress, so up to about, it looks like, the uh, 26 maybe, so gain to two. Looks like we got Lewis Corral on the tackle there, number 44. Got in on that first contact. Yes. You know, credit to the boomers swarming to the ball there. That's something that, you know, I, they really didn't do early in the first half, and they kind of started doing it as the first half went along. But, you know, as soon as that first first contact is made, you know, they're they're all over it. And, uh, yeah, good good point for sure, because that's some of that momentum. They did back it up to the line of scrimmage. The second and 10 here now at the 28 handoff by Wiska around the edge. Looks like it might be Geisler trying to get it. He does, gets to the 20 before he's knocked out of bounds. So did gain some yards on that one. As Wyatt Geisler, a talented young sophomore, kind of a smaller guy out there, but he's got some jets to get to the corner here at Hunter Harrison, maybe on that tackle. Yes, number 58. Got all the way to the edge there, and so gained about eight. Makes a third and two now for Bethany from the Boomer 20. Got to get across that 18 for the first down, see if the Boomers can come up with a stop. As Eric mentioned there, you know, they were rallying to the ball well at the end of the half. Uh, started out with a couple of nice tackles here. The first drive for Bethany. Let's see if they come up with a big stop. Going to be with Wiska in the gun. He's going to have Jaden Gillen with him. Two to the near, two to the far. The very near here is Taylor Hine. Play clock under 10. But Wiska going to snap it, looking to pass, looking that way over. He's got uh, Wyatt Geisler with the catch on the edge. The first down, and he got up to the 10-yard line. And that's going to set up Bethany pretty much with a first and goal right there. And that one really tough to defend. Just a little out right there on third and two when they go to pass. And, and it's there if you want. Yeah, Josiah Bays actually read that pretty well uh, off the stab, you know. And, but unfortunately, he, you know, he jumped. You know, he's, he's not exactly the tallest guy in the world. And, you know, there's a really well pass, uh, really well thrown ball to and the get, sideline. And getting his first action tonight, filling in for Manuel uh, Benuelos. Uh, Basil was just a special teams player last week. First and goal here for Bethany. Handoff inside Jane Gill, and he's going to drag the pile to about the six. Gain of four right there. Just that inside read that we've seen all night for Bethany where, you know, you either hand it off or you keep it with the quarterback. We got a flag here, maybe? I heard. No, maybe not. Looks Let's like, see it. Looks okay. like Kaysen Boring and Talon Laird on the tackle there. Okay. Heard rumor of maybe a flag, but not 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 the case. So, I'll tell you I'll tell you this from the cheer clinic. There's all this gold uh, down here. <laughs> it's gold down marbles, here about yeah. the 50. I see that in the corner of my eye a lot of times. I think there's a flag. I have to kind of catch it. <laughs> look again. Right. right. Uh, second and goal here for Bethany. Quick pass now on the post. It's Heim. What Wiska floats it up to Heim and Taylor Heim. Killing you both ways. Mention they like to split them out every once in a while, and he goes one on one, wins the matchup on the pylon. Bethany scores again. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that was a one handed catch in the end zone. I think it might have been. That was a tough one. Heim, six foot five, 190. We keep highlight him. Yeah, I told you, you remind me of Caden Powell, a supreme athlete, and he is showing that. Yeah, I, could, I couldn't really tell, you know, what kind of catch it was just because where it came down at, but. You know, the way he stopped on the diamond made that cut, it caught Laird off uh, off guard a little bit. He was unable to recover. 
So Bethany now trying to take a 42-0 lead, and they do as Ryland Sanders boots that one through. So with 7.05 to go in the third quarter, Bethany on top of your Boomers, 42-0. We'll step aside for a quick break. You're listening to Boomer Football on Z92. And welcome back here to Boomer Stadium. Dakota Wagner, Eric Scott, Tyler Riggs with you. And the Boomers find themselves in a tough spot now here in the third quarter. They trail 42 nothing with 7.02 to, or excuse me, 7.05 to go in the quarter. And we'll get another chance here on offense as Bethany gets ready to kick this one off. Just been a bit too much tonight of Wiska, of the Gillens, of Woods Harrell, and Taylor Hines just doing a number on the Boomers right now. As Ruslan called her on in for this kick. Had a really good one with the wind the last time. Carried into the end zone. We'll see if he boots it again. Jogs it up. Puts a boot into that one. And again, carry. But this one to the sideline. Old oh, Talon catches it, but steps out of bounds. Old oh, Talon. Eric, I think that one was going out. Talon realizes, hey, I could have just let that one be. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I did see is Coach Luge and just throws his hands up in the air yeah. and just looks at Taylor yeah. with a head shake. That's that's one of your seniors, right? I, I think it's a combination of you want the, he wants the ball. He he wanted the ball. He hadn't had a lot of returnable kicks. He's saying, "Oh, here's a chance," and just didn't quite have the field awareness or use it. He's got field awareness, but there just saw the ball and was got too eager. I think. Yep. Yeah. So first and ten for the Boomers, backed up to their own four as it will be Sam Cheap in the gun, Ace Long with him, two receivers split, now uh, flipped as Taylor going to go to the inside on the near side, Mason Bourne going to go to the inside on the far side, now Taylor across formation, they'll flip it to him, a little skip pass, he's got some yards on the outside, cuts up to 10, there's a flag down, Taylor though gets up to the 15, close to that first down marker, probably got it, but there is a flag that might be in the area of holding, not quite sure. It's over on the far side. I believe it might be. We'll see. False start. False start. Okay. Oh, legal formation. Oh. There you go. So somebody, Eric, not quite lined up where they needed to be there. Uh-huh. Yep, that's one of those things you just you, you get a little out of formation, if you will. You had to flip the receivers like we are talking about, and then maybe you don't quite remember to check with the sideline official there, and so that's what caused that. So wipe the run, or the, I guess, a little skip pass, we call it. It's considered a pass because it's a forward lateral. Um, that's off the board now, so those boomers backed up to their own two, first and 12, 6.59 to go here in the third. Cheap in the gun, long with them. Receiver in motion, it's layered. It's time they fake the handoff, give it to Long. Long cuts back. He's got a gap, gets up to the 10, and finally gets drugged down there before the 15. Almost. Boy, good little misdirection right there in Ace Long. He, you could tell he's excited to hit oh, that Oh, yeah. And, you know, that's the second time tonight, or second or third time now, that Ace Long has finally found the gap right. and almost got the first down. So he's starting to figure it out as a freshman. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of things to learn when you hop up from eighth grade to uh, the big school, the sure. high school. Sure, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Second and short here for the Boomers. Handoff, of course, to Ace Long. Gets bounced outside, though. I think he still may have got back to the line of scrimmage and gained a couple inches. I don't think it's going to be the first, but it'll make a third and about one or less. And it looks like that's going to be the case as they moved up just a bit. So the Boomers have to get to the 14, essentially, or cross that. And it is right on top of it, so they might... And they're going to take a timeout to measure. So, Eric, a little closer than I thought. I thought that was a good couple inches short, but this might come up 
It looks like they've got the nose of the ball, at least from up here, right almost on that 14. What, can you quite make it out down there? Well, yeah, perpendicular a bit, yeah. I, and here comes yep. the measurement. Yep, short by just a couple inches. I agree with him, you know, just yeah. – you know, Ace, you know, right there, had the ball. I tried to cut inside for a couple extra yards, and I think he may have just got a little bit of progress. But, I mean, if, if you, you got to run the ball here, uh, maybe a quarterback sneak to go up for just a couple yards. I mean, just to get that uh, extra set of downs, you know. I, I don't know if you risk running Sam cheap, but I do agree that we got to probably try to run this one a bit. And uh, Bethany probably going to stack that box as well as they, they're pretty much cheated up. I don't see a lot of over-the-top safety help here. They're all up in that box. Got nearly 10 players inside the box. Third and short for the Boomers. Trying to get a first down. Cheap in the gun. Long with them. Man in motion. That's Mason Bourne. Now he zones back out. Hand off inside to Long. Sure enough, he lowers his it. head. Did he get there? It's going to be close. I think, Dakota, you're right. He may have just he got did. over the 14. Barely. We'll see what they mark it. And sure enough, yep, there's the signal. So first down for the Boomers. Ace Long. Able to get one. And hey, good to hear the Boomer crowd there getting into it a bit. Uh, Yep. Yeah, get that energy flowing, get some momentum building. First and 10 now for the members from their own 15, 5.05 to go in the third. Broncos up 42 nothing. Cheap in the gun, handoff inside, Ace Long again. Oh, makes a man miss on the outside, bouncing out. Gets across the 20, tackled up to the 21. And a nice little gain there of six. And, whew, he is starting cut. to figure it <laughs> he out. He's starting to make those cuts. And that's what Coach Lucian, I think, was the most impressed about. His body, folks, as a freshman. If you haven't seen him, it's already pretty pretty stout in terms of what he brings. He's already 180 pounds. I'm two years graduated, <laughs> and I would not want to go against that kid. No, I'm telling you. You wouldn't want to beat him in the hole. I think that's very true. That's very <laughs> true. So, and boy, just those, those quick cuts, that vision, starting to see flashes. There you go. Hey, doing it off the field as well. Another handoff this time to Ace on second and three. Trips forward for a few yards, and I think he got the first down again. And, you know, I, I'll say it I'll say it again. Yep, first down. Coach Luchin said, that kid reminds me of Drake Parker. And, and if you're around for the Drake Parker wow. senior year, I mean, he just about carried the Boomers on his back offensively with what he was able to do because he created so much attention. And, you know, and, and the way he was built, he, he was just bouncing off of guys yeah. like like it was nothing, yeah. and just running over guys three times his size. It's 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 incredible. So another first down for the Boomers. Back to back there, getting that getting that confidence level. You know, getting more momentum uh, for this drive. I think that is exactly what the Boomers need. It's first and ten, ball on the twenty-five, and oh, may have had a timeout to burn there. The play clock was run down. So, yep, and we'll, we'll take the timeout. So with 3.47 to go in the third, we'll go ahead and step aside with them. You're listening to Boomer Football on Z92. And back here at Boomer Stadium, Cody Wagner, Tyler Riggs, Eric Scott with you. As the Boomers trail 42 to nothing right now here in the third, 347 to go. But building some momentum, back-to-back -back first downs off the uh, runs essentially of Ace Long, just plowing forward and getting some holes to work with. I mean, you talk about Ace Long, him and his sister both are, oh, yeah. are athletes. I got that much in Ava. Ava might be a better athlete than Ace. She, she's a premier soccer star, if you I mean, will. And she played powder puff down here. and, and Oh, she's mean, ooh, dude. Yeah. She's, she's tough. Oh, she's tough. I wouldn't want to face her either. Nah, she might she might whoop up on some dudes out here if uh, you pat her up right now. I'm not even going to question <laughs> it. I mean, she will. 
Shotgun, cheap, going to take snap, looking to pass, fires over the middle, and that's going to be incomplete, tended for Talon Laird, and again, the coverage just draped all over Talon. There's just not been anything really to work with in the Boomer passing game. Right kind now. of a smart play there by Talon, as the ball was a little low, he kind of pushed his defender where he couldn't get to the ball in <laughs> Maybe time. got away with a little push. Yeah, yeah you saying. know, but uh, you know, kind of a smart play by him. <laughs> we'll call that senior experience. Second and 10 now for the Boomers. Ball still sitting on that 25. It's going to be cheap in the gun. Ace with him in the backfield. Two to the near, two to the far. Talon on the far outside. Oh, snap outside of cheap. He loses it, collects it back inside the 10, but gets it back on the run, makes the throw to the sideline incomplete. But my goodness, what a job by Sam Cheap. It was a bad snap, went over him, and was able to recover it and fire it out of bounds to just make it an incomplete pass. Yeah, can't just dart it out, yeah. Absolutely. So third and ten now for the Boomers upcoming. And to add to that, you know, instead of just falling on top of the ball, he picks right. it up and, and he gets rid of it. Well, that's because he's a great athlete. Yes. Basketball player, he's able to, you know, I've seen him many a time die for loose balls like that and be able to keep his feet. Cheap in the gun, looking to pass on third and 10. Got some pressure, escapes it. Now steps up, he's got some space to run. Gets across the 35 to the four, he slides down. That's a first down, and there we go, Eric. You were talking about in that first half, maybe to see him take off in those situations, knowing he's got space, does it there, gets a big first down. Starting to drive here. They've got the ball up to the 40. 3.08 to go in the third. First and 10, Cheap in the gun. Ace long with them. Two to the left, two to the right in the formation. Cheap back to pass, looking for the screens. Got underneath Ace long. Blocker out in front. Ace across 45 to 50. Taking off to the 45 on the other side. Bethany territory for he's brought down. Thought just for a second with him building up that head of steam, he might have really been able to get going. You got mamas down there <laughs> clapping the hands, you know, jumping up and down. That's my boy. You know, I talked to Ace Dad today. He actually called me because he's wanting to get copies of the Boomer Coach Show first, and I saw him outside. Um, coming into the game, and he had a big old smile on his face. Oh, I he, bet. You know, he, he saw Ava have her kind of star moments, and he's really excited for what Ace could do. And another first down for the Boomers. They're driving out to Bethany territory at the 45. First and 10, 235 to go in the quarter. Cheap in the gun, back to pass. Looking, looking, going to take a deep shot, trying to go to tail layered over the top. Incomplete, no flag called, some hand fighting, but they'll let it play. I mean, there's hand fighting on both sides. That was coverage by Ryland Sanders. The senior for Bethany over there on him. And now bring up second and ten. Right. I think, yeah, I think the first play of the first quarter is what that was, or first play for the Boomers of the first quarter. So. And then Sanders, you know, after he gives that little shove, just say, Taylor, let me give you a hand, you know, get back up. Good sportsmanship <laughs> yeah. for Bethany there. Yeah, you like to see that. And I agree with there. Good no call. You allow some hand fighting. You don't want to get too ticky tack. Second attempt, 230 to go in the quarter. Ball in the 45. Cheap in the gun. Man in motion. It's boring, but they hand it off inside the long. Long, little bit of gap. Across the 40. Spins off a guy, but gets taken down off that spin. It's White Geisler on the tackle, but not before Ace got it across the 40 to the 39 and, for a gain of six. And Ace there, you know, starting to really just kind of figure out, you know, how, to get, flow, this, yeah. how to get around this uh, Bethany defense. And it's starting to work. Got a really good drive here for Woodward going. And hey, also, shout out to that Boomer line because you're in a tough spot where, hey, it's been, you know, Eric's mentioned multiple times, the size difference in the lines is tough. And they're starting to move some guys. So you, you get some holes and you get, you know, you're running back some yards, your quarterback some gaps to run when he needs to out of the pocket. Third and four for the Boomers, trying to convert under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Cheap in the gun again. Man in motion is boring from the left side. Snap, handoff inside Ace Long, trips through the hole there, fights forward, gets almost to the mark. I think it's going to be short by a yard. Got to the 36, need to get to the 35. And sure enough, it's going to bring up the fourth and one. At this point, I mean, kind of got to go for it, Tyler, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. I, no, mean, I agree. You got to get momentum going. You have that yeah. momentum. You know, I mean, you have a lot of momentum right now, but uh, from this long drive that we have going, but maybe if Ace can just punch it in there for just a yard, give the Boomers more momentum to get down the field a bit and possibly score here. You, you want to get the score here for your order. Yes. You really do. You want to get on the board. 
Got a minute 10, fourth and one, sure enough, going for it. And the gun is cheap. Ace with him. Two to the near, two to the far. Oh, and a false start, I think, down there, Eric. Yep, bit of a jump, unfortunately. It looked like there from uh, Jaden Koch, coach. And what number is that, Tyler? 53, 53. Jaden Cook. Jaden Cook. I, see, I knew it was something weird like that. I, was, I knew I was pronouncing it wrong because I think there's a, I think he was on the JV and I had that one game in, in basketball. So I back it up and set a fourth and one to a fourth and six for the Boomers. Maybe see get a little air action in here. Minute three to go in the third. Cheap in the gun. Trips to the near one to the far. Cheap going to roll out to the near side. Looking to pass. Sets up. He's got nobody available. Still looking. Does fire to a man. Is that picked off? It is. Kel Witwiska, the senior, makes an incredible interception. Oh. <laughs> Lost it there for a second. Yep. <laughs> Cutting in and out. Eric had the spot on me. It was right there in front of him, so still still can't pick you up quite yet, Eric. Oh, there we go. So third pick of the night for the Bethany defense. That one just, like you said, incredible play by a senior there who plays quarterback, also plays safety. Made the ultimate read, and Bethany looks like they're starting to get their twos in there. Got a new quarterback in the game, first and ten. It's going to be Jackson Payne. Payne going to flip out a pass. They're on the, uh, the out route, if you will, quick out, and it's going to be a gain of a few yards from the 34 up to about the 37. Zathan Klingenville is going to be on the tackle there for the Boomers. And it was Alex Strotter on the completion, the reception, I should say. And he got up. Landry Locklear in now at the uh, running back there with Payne. Payne will take the snap. He'll hand off to Locklear. And, boy, Eric, just as you said, the Boomers stand him up way behind the line of scrimmage and force it back to about a third and nine. It was Ethan Matt, Yeah, he's the bat fired up there and a host of Boomers with him. And that should be doing it for the third quarter at will. That was the last play of the third quarter. So we'll come back with the fourth, and the Boomers are going to try to make a third down stand. You're listening to Boomer Football on Z92. And welcome back here to Boomer Stadium. Dakota Wagner, Eric Scott, Tyler Riggs with you as we enter the fourth quarter. The Boomer, Boomers find themselves down 42 to nothing, but they've got a third and eight here to try to stop Bethany, get the ball back, and maybe get a score on the board after a big run stop there. Back Bethany up. And the gun's going to be Payne. He's there with Locklear. Got two to the near, one to the far. Snap to Payne, looking to pass here on third and eight. Going to float a pass up there. Got a man, but that's overthrown and incomplete to the sideline. That would have been Alex Strotter. He had already connected with on this drive once, but that pass just floated out of bounds. We'll bring up fourth down. Hey, Boomers get stopped defensively. Hey, he was over the top, yeah. He was <laughs> yeah, they, it looked like they ran a switch route, Eric, uh, as far as the receivers. Maybe got that tangled up or a wheel, I should say, a wheel proper term. 
Your goal? There we go. There we go. Well, the code was off. I was trying to figure out why the code was off. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Fourth down for Bethany, and they will have to punt this one. See, I believe it's Colton uh, Calderon, if I'm not mistaken on that. It is. Does a rugby-style punt. Bit of a liner. Taylor going to have a chance to return it, but must it. Now he's got to dive on it. Still loose. Who's got it? Bethany. Maybe Bethany. And they do. Oh, my goodness. Talk about just a series of backbreakers. And so on that, Bethany's going to recover it at about, what do we got up there, at the 22 or 3. And, oh, man. So Bethany, instead of Woodward getting the ball back, it'll be Bethany taking over at the Boomer 23. They get a second chance here, essentially, on this drive. Taylor 43 to go. Just not having it on there, just shaking his head. Just needs to calm down just a little bit. Yeah, and it's tough. You're a you senior. Know, yeah. You got the home opener. You're trying to ball out in front of the crowd. You got senioritis. You know, you're pumped for your senior year. Sure, sure. And uh, yeah, just just tough. I'm sure he will recover. Oh, he's, yeah. he's got a good mental attitude to himself in terms of the way he's able to carry himself. So, Bethany offense back on the field. It'll be Payne in at the quarterback with Locklear there beside him. Got two out to the far. See Strader on the inside on the far side, and then one to the near here. Payne going to take snap. He'll hand off inside to Locklear. There a man go. instantly right there to wrap him up, trying to get a number on that one. Came from the edge, it looked like. And that is uh, Zathan Klingenpil. Zathan Klingenpil there, it looks like. Well, yep, Zathan Klingenpil, the young sophomore, making a good tackle there off the edge. Get a little help there from Moose, Ethan Matt. So second and 10 now for Bethany. And you, it, at least the positive for the Boomers here is you've, you've strung together some, some stops now in terms of just Found negative it. momentum for yes. the Bethany. Payne with the snap and the gun, takes it a little option outside. He's got Lockler out there with space across the 20, up to the 15, turns it upfield to the 10 for he's knocked out of bounds. And they lost, it looked like outside contained there. Man stepped up to take the pit or to take the quarterback, but nobody was there for the pitch. Looks as uh, Mason Boring was there for the outside shove to kind of save the play. Yeah. Eric, what you got? Nope. <laughs> Yep. So first and goal now for Bethany at the Boomer 10. Payne in the gun. He'll hand off the lock layer this time. Three or four Boomers right there at the line of scrimmage. Let's see, maybe is that Carson Medina there? Nope, Josiah Beza, the young sophomore, uh, was the lead on that. And he had about two or three Boomers with him to plug that one up. So bring up a second and Looks goal like from the Looks like the defense 10. read that one like a book. Yeah, you know, we mentioned him a couple times, but Josiah Beza for having to essentially spot start tonight, take over for Ben Whalen. He's doing a good job. Doing a pretty good job stepping yes. up in some of these situations. Still having some moments where you tell he's a sophomore, but you'll take the good with the bad in terms of some of those flash plays. And replacing uh, Manuel ben, uh, Menzuelas, you know, he's not doing a, a bad job at all. He's he's filling his role. Paying down the gun, going to drop back to pass here on second and goal. Went to Strotter, went through Strotter's hands, incomplete. He was open right there. And just could come up with it. From the looks of it up here, he had the ball waiting for, for his defender to, to yeah. pass on and step into the end zone. But not the case. Drops incomplete. So third and 10 now for Bethany. 10.07 to go here in the ballgame. Some good news is it looks like Peyton Carter did take the ice off his shoulder and so that is some good news for him. Maybe nothing serious there. In the gun is Payne. Speed option again. He'll pitch out to Locker. This time the Boomers have it wrapped up. Clean pill there on the tackle. Looks like a long win. Aiden Hilliard, number Aiden 25. Hilliard getting in there. So brings up a fourth and goal now for Bethany inside the 10. <laughs> Looks like maybe Bethany trying to go with a field goal here. You know, it's good to see that the Boomer defense yep, has, has finally got a couple stops here against this Bethany uh, offense. It'll be Ruslan Calderon on for the field goal attempt. 
Taylon Laird is, is a good rusher, um, you know, when it comes to field goal. So let's see if Taylon can use his speed and advantage to uh, possibly get a finger on this one. He, he almost got an extra point a couple of touchdowns back. Let's see if we get this ball snap. Ball, er, ball is down, kick it's is no up. No good. good. Oh, man. Calderon looked like he just did not line that up very well, Eric. Taylon Laird. It's blocked. Yeah. No, lost you there. Lost you a bit, yep. So despite the uh, muff punt that set up Bethany with the short field position, the Boomer defense stands tall, get a stop, and it will be first and ten now. Oh, okay, all right. It's first and ten cheap out there in the gun with Ace Long, two to the far, two to the near. Taylor Lair, the nearest inside receiver. Now Mason, motion goes Mason Bourne. And off inside long, he's got a hole. Cuts it out to the 30. Mason Duke, 35, 40, 45, 50. To the sideline, cuts it back again. 45 gets knocked out of bounds. Oh, the freshman Ace Long getting the crowd back into it. A bit. Look at him getting fired up on the sideline. Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh. it looked beautiful. Oh, boy. You know when? It reminds me when Bob Stoops was talking about Adrian Pearson being the Lamborghini in the garage, you know, and eventually he was told, hey, you got to let the guy out of the garage. And uh, we're seeing a little bit of that here with Coach Luchin and Ace Long. Yeah. Boy, you take advantage. So a big run there. That was a 19, no, oh, 17-yard run, it looks like, about from the 20 up to the 37. Back in the gun is cheap, looking to pass. Got some pressure, steps away from it. Now steps left, got made open on the sideline. It's caught there, and that is, I believe, Carson Medina making the catch over on the sideline. Founts, no, excuse me, Josiah, Josiah Beza. So getting a look at receiver and steps in. Oh, Zane Weibel, I'm sorry, 33. See, I can't see that 33 and 32. That's on me. You know, That's you go, on me. You, you Zane Weibel, good job. You talk about going back to ace, and if he misses that defender right there, he's gone. Oh, I mean, that oh kid man. has, has <laughs> speed, is, but just him powering out there and, and making that big run, that's a big momentum booster for, he, for he, the we, we saw it on the sideline for sure. So second and two here after the eight-card completion from Cheap to Weibel. Cheap will be in the gun. Along with him in the backfield, trips to the far side. Snap, Cheap looking to pass. Now he's going to take himself as an option, actually. Excuse me, and Cheap going to cut up field for the first down. Got across the 25 down to about the 23. And kind of an interesting look there on the speed option, if you will. Kind of an extended one uh, out there at the receiver slot. So good, good read there by Sam Cheap. First and 10 for the Boomers at the Bethany 23, trying to get into the red zone under eight minutes to go in this one. They trail 42 nothing. Cheap out there in the gun with Long beside him. Takes snap to roll to the near side, looking for some receivers. He's going to step up, fire, oh, pass, almost intercepted. There was a attempt at a catch there between Mason Boring, but he got collided with by Alex Strotter, who was there on the coverage, and that almost got tipped right into a Bethany Bronco. And they're just taking every chance to scoop any, you know, ball up from the from the air, you know. Very God, well. they, do, they do the tip drill very well, apparently. Yes, you talk Bethany. about effort for those loose balls, and, and Bethany has it. So, second down and 10, ball the 23. I think, we might see a, I think we might see a run here from Ace Long. He is in the gun with Sam Cheap, two to the near, two to the far. Cheap takes the snap, looking back to pass. Still looking, it's got some time. Goes over the middle, almost oh. had a man streaking for a second. I believe that might have been Ace Long who came out of the backfield. It was, had come out of the backfield and got up kind of into the middle of that defense and just couldn't quite haul it in, pass let him just a touch far. So third and ten now here. Do like the aggressive calls, Dakota. Trying to trying to get something. Yes. I mean, trying to cap off a drive, knowing you got a little bit of time left. When that ball was released, mom <laughs> mom shot up real quick. She, and, and she was, was right ready for down. the capture. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. So third and ten, cheap in the gun. Trips to the far side. One to the near. 
Long in the backfield. In motion goes Boren. The handoff inside to Long. Long going to cut up field. Gets to the 15. Going to be stopped short, I think, of that first down because they need to get to the 13. Does as they'll mark him at the 15. But another good run up the gut from the Boomers. And Ace Long, and, you know, not only do they have, Eric, that you mentioned the big run freeing some things up, that little bit of misdirection, I think, is helping as well with the motion. Well, you know, one of the things I wrote up in the in the team preview, if you will, last week going into Guthrie, that Coach Luchin really expects Ace to show that he's kind of beyond his years as a freshman. So you mentioned that patience, Eric, and that's, you know, one of those key indicators that this kid is, is starting to read things at a higher level quickly. Be fourth and one here for the Boomers. Got to get to the 13. I think so fourth and two, I guess, actually. I think we're Cheap in the gun. Pitch. So he may be a pitch. pitch. Yep. Snap, handoff inside to Long. He's got the first down up to the 10. Now fighting forward to the 5. Still fighting forward. Finally gets taken down inside the 5. Down to about the 4. And, boy, this kid just, <laughs> yeah, he wants that touchdown. And, and, you know, Mama's liking it down there. <laughs> yes, she is. So another Boomer first down. First time we could say this. First and goal for the Boomers. Woo! That's what we like to hear. Feels good. Feels it good. Does. This is the first of the year, yes, sir. See, I, I think it's you, Eric. You're the good luck charm of that. <laughs> first and goal. Hand, hand, hand off inside. Say, Slogan, he's into the end zone for the touchdown. The freshman on the board. You could hear the applause from the Boomer faithful. How about that? The freshman, his first varsity touchdown comes from four yards out. And big moment for him. You could tell, really enjoy really, that. Really big moment. You know, the first touchdown of the season for Woodward. Yes, sir. No other long, no, it doesn't belong to any other than Ace Long himself. And that offensive line. Oh, Clear yes. Of the way. You know, Clear of the just way. perfect execution. Very long drive, but it paid off. And hey, we get to see Ace Long's foot now as he gets to kick this extra point. Been waiting to see this as well. Oh, yes. Snap, ball down, hold is good, kicks up, and it is by far and away good. That was almost as tall as the goalpost, just on extra point. And just like that, the Boomers on the board for the first time this season, though they do trail 42 to 7 with 619 to go in the game. We'll go ahead and step aside for a quick break. You're listening to Boomer Football on Z92. And welcome back here to Boomer Football on Z92. Dakota Wagner, Eric Scott, Tyler Riggs with you. And you hear the band playing. Got some good news in terms of that to be able to get a touchdown on the board here. And, you know, we just we just talked about, Eric, just the momentum. Just the momentum for all those guys. Um, just to be able to get that. Okay. Gotcha. Well, and, I, you know, I have been hearing reports of – we, we could hear Eric, but we've been getting some reports from Ty Evans that maybe he's not quite coming through on the broadcast. He has been at points, so I keep throwing it to him just to, to hope we got it, but it's one of those deals. So, uh, But Dakota, the momentum there in play for the Boomers being able to get on the you board. Know, like you said, uh, really good job there by Ace Long. Just very good drive here for the Boomers as, as he kicks it way to, to the end zone almost. Almost going to be returnable, though. That's going to be taken by, I believe, Strotter. Oh, big wow. collision there at the 15. Had to see what number that was. Put him on 37 his feet. for the Boomers. That was Jacoby Brown. Brown. Jacoby Brown, the freshman, listed. And here you go, Dakota. Here's your Nash Hunter. This, like, yeah, this is listed as a running back defensive lineman at 220. That's a freshman. I mean, he, he put the rocks on him. That he did. So that one. Got returned to the 26, about 25, 26. So say the 26 
And so we're definitely will take over at the first and 10. And just when Tyler says he thinks it's returnable, he gets oh, those are, I mean, you got a little a bit boulder of yards. hits him. <laughs> that it does. So first and 10 for Bethany. 6.13 to go here in the fourth. They lead 42-7. to seven. Looks like maybe a new quarterback in there as well. And it'll be a direct snap. I'll take it. Oh, wow. And getting a few yards there is Judson Gillen, freshman. And he Number got slung down. And if you can guess who that was on the tackle, a big tackle, kind of a body slam towards the ground. Number 27, Zathan Klingenpil. Yep. Not before a gain of six, though. Second and four now for Bethany. Clock trailing down here, and I'm sure Bethany going to try to uh, try to take their time, if you will, as they'll run that play clock. Gillen still there in at quarterback. So that's the freshman. He'll hand off. Nope, fix the handoff to Locklear. Looking to pass now. He's going to try to fire. That's tipped. That's picked off. Intercepted. Going the other way is Medina. Carson Medina. Or yes, Carson Medina with the pick there. And that puts the Boomers into plus territory. And how about that? Go. We talk about I mean, momentum. You get a turnover. And we talk about Carson Medina. You yes. know, being a good player, you know, taking a, a couple good uh, returns uh, when have a kickoff. But great there by Carson Medina. You know, has I think it was a tip ball, if I'm not mistaken, and it lands in the hands of Carson Medina. He takes it for a little bit of a route there and eventually gets stopped. But the momentum is definitely there for the Boomers there. And let's see if they can convert back on offense. For sure, for sure. And uh, now another chance to, as you mentioned, be able to do some work offensively and keep building there. And uh, fortunately, gonna have to, Eric's going to have to call it on the sideline. We're just struggling with that connection. So hopefully we get that ironed out by next week. It's moving parts. We, you know, It's week two for us, but it's really kind of week one all over again. Yes, we got Boomer TV, got Eric on the sideline. A whole new setup. Do want to shout out Eric, though, for doing a great job. Kept it, kept up with that action down there. And I'm, Very like I nice. said, hope we'll get that sorted out going into next week. If not, hey, maybe we just three-man booth it, you know? Maybe we just do it that way. So be first and ten here for the Boomers at their – at the Bethany 35, be cheap in the gun. Fakes the handoff to Long. Now he's got a short pass out there to Mason Bourne. Got some space, got a block. Up to 25 and gets chopped down inside the 25. It's about the 22-yard line. That's going to be enough for a first down. They just need the 25. And it seems like we're starting to get a different level of momentum here for the Boomers. Starting to see a couple uh, different routes that we're running to get um, caught you know, down the sideline. Uh, not doing a bad job. Now, and getting some of that open, and we do we talked about with Eric Dakota there, do you, I could as well, just being able to have that run free up some of those saints. Big, big, big time help. So first and 10 for the Boomers. Now at the Bethany 22, threatening in the red zone again here with under five minutes to go. Trail 42 to 7, cheap in the gun. Long with them. Just takes a snap, looks back to pass. Throws over the middle, has got it, man. It's Mason Bourne again. This time cuts it up inside the 15, almost to the 10. Move got the past chains. the sticks. And yes, sir, moves the chains again. And how about Mason Bourne working that inside receiver up? You know, he, he's been there for the past two plays, but he's kind of been there for interception against Guthrie. So yeah. he's he's a, he's a well-known name at the beginning of the season, and it's he's proving his point that, he, that here's a reason that he's a starter. Yeah, and really, you know, that was one of those kids we highlighted last year. Him and Cason Bourne yes. were both – you know, freshmen that got increased opportunities as the season went on due to injuries, COVID issues, things of that nature, and they really performed. So it's good to see them back out here, um, you know, start of the season, trying to capitalize on that. First and 10 for the Boomers at the Bethany 12 in the red zone. Can't get a first down. Bourne goes motion across the front of the formation. Head off inside, though, to ace the long. Not going to get a lot, but will plunge forward for a couple of yards. Gets to the 10. So he'll gain two, and it'll be second and eight. Boomer's trying to go for the fake back to Mason Bourne, yeah. but instead, you know, ditch it over to Ace Long and try to get a couple yards up the middle. Some of that misdirection we talked about, you know, where that kind of, even though you may think it's going to Ace or know it's, you think it's going to Ace, you still, you hope it causes Bethany just kind of hesitate for just yeah, that and, half second. And, and maybe possibly uh, create a gap in a way for, mm -hmm. for Ace to get up in there and, and get a couple extra yards. So second eight now from the Bethany tent, 340 to go here in the ball game. Boomer's trail, 42-7. Cheap in the gun, along with them. Three to the far, one to the near. Cheap, good recognition again by Mr. Cheap. We, you know, again, talked about that. Start of the second half, he's getting more confident out there to kind of tuck that and run, use that athleticism. And then you talk about the, the offensive line that gave him enough time, you know, to sit yep. in the pocket, waiting around. Read uh, things you know, to develop, yeah. Try to figure out, and then he looks behind him, still has enough time to execute, make a gap, and, and get a couple yards up for the 
third and one. It's third and one, as Dakota mentioned. Ball on the three. They got to get to the two. Under three minutes to play. Cheap in the gun again. Man in motion across formation. Hand off inside, though. Dace Long trying to cut up and going to be plugged up, though. Does gain about first a down. couple of yards. Yep, does first get that goal. first down. First and goal from the one for the Boomers. And then finally getting in that rhythm. If, if I'm Coach Lugin, you give the ball to, uh, to Ace Long right up the middle for a touchdown. Oh, yeah. you you got to go I right mean, back to the young man here. And sure enough, he's right back in there. That huddle was not very long. Now they'll rehuddle it as they're waiting the play to come in from Zane Weibel. I keep getting his number confused with Cars or, uh, with uh, Josiah Beza, at least offensively, so I apologize. 33-32 <laughs> and 32 plays tricks on you. Go. The leadership of Ace Long is, is just amazing as a freshman. I mean, you talk about this kid just – knows how to get the ball down the field. First and goal for the one and the gun. Hand off inside a long, plunges forward. Did he get there? He's in the pile. Oh, I think they're going to mark him just a couple inches short. He is inside the one at about, God, probably the inch or two I mean, yard line. Tyler, we're talking about how close is the ref shoe is literally standing <laughs> on the white line. Well, that is how close if it was standing, it would be a touchdown, but he is as close as you could be without standing on. It's It's close. So second and goal from inside the one at about literally the two-inch yard line here. Got 159 to go and count down. So the Boomers not in a rush, just trying to cap off this drive yet again. Trying to put some more points on the board. Chief's going to be in the gun, along with him. Three to the far, one to the near. Play clock down three, snap, handoff inside along, and I think he got it this time. No signal yet. Oh, yeah. Gonna, they're no, marked him no, short again. Man. Are you kidding me? That's insane. It looked like he had the ball in the end zone. I thought he'd die for it, but you know what? Hey, I guess credit to the Bethany defensive line right now because they're they're keeping it a stalemate enough. They're making him work for it. Third and goal from the inch yard line coming up. Minute 20 and count down. The Boomers, again, not in a rush here to try to plunge us in. No, they've got a little time. And with Bethany, you know, at the line, still not letting Woodward <laughs> score, that may be kind of a test for Woodward later on the season. Sure. So yeah. it, it See may if be, you can it, muscle up and get in here. Yep. Maybe giving them uh, kind of help for the season to come. Cheap now going to go up to the line of scrimmage. Was in the gun under center. And now just going to dive himself in there. Did he get it? Yes, he, he did. did. Sam Cheap into the end zone on the QB dive. Good recognition to call that. And get himself up under there for the, the easy plunge and for the touchdown. He lined up like he was going to give the ace, then all of a sudden gets behind the center and drives it in for a touchdown. Boomer's on the board again. Found some points here in the fourth quarter. And they still trail a 42-13. They'll be ace long on for the extra point to try to make it 42-14. And it's not very often we hear of a player that scores a touchdown, then turns around <laughs> and goes and scores a field goal. Back in the old days they did that, way before me and you were around, you know, the guys in the 19-teens were able to do that. <laughs> Snap, ball down, kick is up, and oh, plenty of power. That is good for Mr. Long. That's what we like to see, Tyler. 42-14, Boomer's trail, but hey, you know what? We, we preached it all the second half with Eric, with you, Dakota, about just Building that momentum, executing, being able to get something going, heading into a, a road trip next week against Newcastle, which which is who will be the opponent. And you know that's the game where you go into and and the Boomers with two games underneath their belt, 0 and 2. You got to think that you go into Newcastle and, and you and you pull off a win there. Is that a district game? Not a district. Not a district, non -district contest. The last non-district contest. Non-district. Checking up on Newcastle. Trying to see where they're at score-wise here tonight. See if I can find them. They actually are leading Plainview right now, 16-6 to six at the half is what we've got last updated there. So, interesting score. That is a very interesting score. Newcastle had taken a, I believe last week, had taken a win. Got beat Cleveland, 38-0. Shut them yeah. out. So, with that, 42-14, under a minute to play. Boomer's going to kick it off here. Bethany will get the ball back. Can't imagine they're going to try to really push it down the field, per se. Not with 55 seconds. I'd, not with this, I'd hope yeah, not. Not with the lead like that, for sure. But it'll be ace long for the kickoff. Ball teed up, steps up into it, and going to go with a little bit of a short kick on that one. It's going to be returnable here by, oh, oh my goodness, wow. who else? Ace Long, Ace. <laughs> the kicker, read that and just came flying across and made the tackle. Oh, excuse me, that is not Ace. That is number eight. We were getting that a little wrong there. Daxton Klein, the sophomore, did the pooch kick, 
and then turn around and got the charge of a tackle. I, I mean, mean, just laid the man out. Absolutely drilled him. <laughs> gets gets his opportunity, makes the most of it right there to do the little short kickoff and then turn around and, and get a guy. I mean, the game's not over yet. Credit to Dax. I mean, wow. <laughs> So first and ten here for Bethany at their the Boomer, or excuse me, at their own 32. Just 50 seconds on the clock, and it looks like Bethany going to go into victory formation here. And sure enough, that's a snap and a nil down. They will have to get one more off before this is official. But uh, your final score is going to be 40 to or 42 to 14 is going to be the final of this one. Bethany wait and take that final snap. Moving on, like I said a minute ago, moving on to Road Challenge in Newcastle next week. Take a little bit of a drive. Yeah, going to get down there, you know, um, in the metro area, as we like to call it. Second deal there taken by Bethany, and that one's going to wrap this one up. And like I said, the score going to be 42 to 14. Bethany going to come away winners. They improve to 2-0 and on the season. We're going to fall to 0-2. And uh, with that, let's step aside for a break, and we'll come back with the post-game show. You're listening to Boomer Football on Z92.